Howdy, 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 howdy. I hope everybody's well on this lovely sunny day. It's actually absolutely lovely today. Well, what we're going to be doing is, well, there's a few things I want to do actually. One is, I'm do, well, I've repaired this gate, which is our stair gate, but also I need to put a brace on because it sagged a bit and that's why I had to repair it. It dropped by about an inch and it wasn't lining up with the locks. Then over here is my, oh well, it's my uh, draw horse. So this is what I do, my wood bodgery on. But I haven't done it for a while and it's been left outside in the rain and the weather. Yeah, it's a bit worse for wet. So what I've done is I've delved it out and we're going to repair it. We're going to change and, you know, um, replace some components of the uh, draw horse. But also we're going to add a brace onto the uh, gate here, which I made when I had my carpal tunnel surgery. Uh, my, uh, my hands were itchy in bandages. Yeah, when I made that. <laughs> and uh, if I get time, I might fix a garden chair as well. But anyway, there's a bit of wood bodgery sort of stuff going on. But first of all, we're going to be doing this gate. So I'm a couple of minutes late, but you know me. <laughs> Hello, Bazza. Hope you're well. So I hope the audio is good. If it's not, I can always put the other microphone on. Why, hey? Why not click like? Yeah, please. Because <laughs> it helps the channel, obviously. So what we got is this gate here, which I've actually put some more fixings into it, mechanical fixings, because it's, it literally just had um, pegs and dowels and stuff like that. And what's happened is I've shrunk over a period of time, and the weight of the gate, it has, well, it's dropped. So I've stuck some mechanical fixings in, screws, basically, screws and um, glued up, hence these clamps. And I've checked it, 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 it fits okay now, so I'm quite happy about that. It lines up again. But to stop it from actually sagging again, as you can see, that's the hinge side, and that's the latch side of this particular gate. And what happens is, because it's fixed on this side here, all that weight is hanging here, like so. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> So the load is here. This is where the load is, because this is a fixed point. That's a fixed point. Now, normally you do a thing called ledge and brace, and I didn't on this gate, and I should have done really at the time. And it's covered in dog here, because that's what it's for. So a dog gate, that's what it is. Yeah, it's a dog gate. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix a short brace in just across here on the back here, just so it doesn't sag again. Yeah, that's the plan. But it's quite a cool gate, that is. So, yeah, as you can see, it's got, it's got a snake carved in the top. I got a bit carried away. I'm sorry. I do apologise. Oh, I've got an ice cream! How am I supposed to talk with an ice cream? Is that, if it's fro if it frozen, is it, fro if, is it still soft? Because our stupid local supermarket, yeah, they've got no lids on the freezers. And instead of putting the things like the vegetables there where the freezer's got no lids on, they put the ice cream. Now, put the freezer as, 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 as soft. Please, super play. Merci. Thanks, Al. <laughs> so, um, I'll have that later when it's actually like ice cream and not like a milkshake on a cone. Because that's not so good, no. Anyway, here we Who's there? Oh, there we are. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, you're having a good day too there, Casper, Norbiner. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually a lovely day today. It's lovely and sunny. Look at over here. Beautiful. Yeah, can't be bad. So that's what we're going to be doing anyway. Because first of all, I'm going to fix the brace onto this uh, gate. So let's bring you down a little bit lower, I think, so you can see. Because I've kind of occupied my bench, my outside bench at the minute. There you are. Maybe that might, is that a little, oh, not really. <laughs> well, I'll move this, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, I'll take this off for the moment, and we'll put this back on, maybe do our repairs on that draw horse. Now the draw horse, basically, like, it's a, it's a vice, effectively, and you put the pressure on with your foot, but because it's broken, it doesn't work. Now, I've pre-cut some bits of wood here, ready to you know, do our repairs, what have you, for it. And also another wedge, because I've lost the wedge, which I'll show you what that's all about uh, later. So um, I'll whack this into the vice, just so we can keep it on the bench here, so we can see what's going on. Do -do 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 -do. It's this little cheap silver line vice. I didn't want to get a good voice out there because um, it's wet. So all I have to do is I have to apply it with a little oil to make sure it doesn't rust up. Because there's any crappy old voice. 
So I'm gonna put it this way round. Hopefully it'll, it'll go in there. I might need to put a bit of it in because um, it's actually it's, it's not you know the, the actual gate's not straight. It's made that way because the wood's not straight. It's wood bodgery, you know. Now the term wood bodging, it's, it gives a bit of bad rep. You know, a wood bodger. My God, he's a bodger. He's bodged that. Oh, okay, he's bodged it. Well, no, no, wood bodging's a skill. The wood bodger be the man who, or woman, or whatever it is in the woods, there's that clearing, chuck through trees down, what have you, some hazel, some chestnut, willow even. And uh, they'd use their draw knife, and they'd be, they'd be the ones, I'd be using a draw knife for the first, get it, you know, somewhere near true with a draw knife, using that sawhorse. And then they'll be, clean it all up. And then they'll stick on a lathe, their treadle lathe. You've probably seen it, usually in old shows, and their tread a bit string round, and a big whip of wood, and it, basically the lathe's going in both directions as it goes up and goes down again. And that's how they'll turn all the legs. So that's got all the spindles. So the chair maker, hence, start off with all their spindles that they got from the wood bodger from the woods. So there's all, you know, it's a bit of a, um, oh, like a syndicate <laughs> of craftsmen. And then you'd have the man making all the seats. And then you have the man, I say the man, because that's kind of how it was then, uh, making, well, putting the whole lot together. So there'd be like three elements to it. You have the guy there uh, turning all the legs, the spindles in the wood. So you create all these lovely spindles, green. They weren't dry, weren't dry timber, but it's green. And then you have the person there doing all the seats. And he generally would use seasonal or partially seas seasoned timber, quite often it'd be elm or something like that, um, or beech. Uh, Hetra, what I say, and um, and then you'd have the uh, the person who then put the whole lot together. So he'd be doing all the joints and stuff like that. So it's it's skillful work, and yet we call it wood bodging. And the reason for that is because unless your furniture was, you know, all pretty, all that marquetry and stuff like that, especially the uh, French Renaissance stuff. Yeah, you know, that's kind of old oh, Louis the Wassets. <laughs> that kind of furniture I don't particularly like because it's not to me it's not functional you can't put your hot coffee on the top you end up with a ring mark and then all the veneers lift off it's not great so that, that's what we consider today is for, oh, for us I'm a news here it's somebody who makes furniture the wood bodger was the person who would uh, be making all the chair legs and stuff and it wasn't it was considered a low form of woodwork god knows what these people would have thought these days when they see them making all their furniture at chipboard and melamine so i'm gonna i'm gonna run this wire brush over first because it's literally full of dog hair yes we've got dogs and for some reason this gate hasn't been cleaned Caroline, <laughs> there again, I suppose I could do it myself, but I didn't notice, to be honest. That's the thing about dogs, you know, dogs are great, apart from, they're dirty little buggers. Get an airline, that's the way to do it. Ha! Ah! Blow all that out of the way. There we go. Oh, it's nice to be doing something a bit more positive for change instead of talking about uh, tractor porn. <laughs> if you know what I mean. There. Quite nice creating stuff. Stuff, stuff about making things, you know. It's, it's, it's kind of a therapy. That's what it is. See my legs today. <laughs> oh, dear. Afternoon now, I hope you're well. Lovely day there, yeah. We're in the waiting for a storm here. Oh, Craig in Malaga, are you? Oh, Malaga, Provence. Oh, did you have at Malaga Airport? Oh dear, what are they doing? They're blocking the bricks from being able to board the aeroplane via the EU gate. Uh-huh. EU passport control. No, 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 not for, not for us Brits anymore, no. We have to go for the special gate for the special people. Well, with everyone. <laughs> Oh, da, 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 da. Hello, 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 yes, we're having a very good day. So, I hope the audio is okay. I'm using my walkabout mic because I'm walking about, you know, my wireless microphone. Um, if it's bad, I'll have to put my um, 
direction I'm going on the other one. Hope the audio is okay. It's usually good. So anyway, so I've got a piece of wood that I grabbed out of the pile, the wood pile. There you go. That is the bit we're going to use. <laughs> you can't use that, he says. No. I can't use that. Either. It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? No, it's not. It's a bit of chestnut. And it's going to do what I want. It goes with the look of the, of the gate, is it? Pretty much. And the idea is, is the hinge side. I'm not sure which way I was going to have it now. Was it that way? No. That way? Yeah, it's going to be like that. That's it. Something like that. So it's going to go on there, like that. That's the idea. So it looks sort of in keeping with the gate as it is. We'll get rid of this pointy stabby bit at the top bit. We don't want that pointy stabby bit because you get, well, you get stabbed by the pointy stabby bit. It'll be a little bit shorter than that because I'm going to um, trim that so it fits the top of this somewhat. And then we'll fix that into place with some glue and screws and what have you. I'm not using pe pegs in this case because they dry out. Because they dried out, that ends up causing a bit of an issue. So I'm going to screw it. Um, I do love nostalgia, but it's got, also got to be functional. But pegs do work, you know, they do, they do the job. Um, but it's only a brace. I'm trying to justify it. That's, what, that's, what, that's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to justify the fact that I'm popping out. <laughs> but we are going to use an axe. Yes. Maybe the draw knife as well. The only thing is I haven't got my, um, my saw horse there, so my, sorry, my jaw horse there, so I can't use that because uh, it's broken. And yeah, so that's going to go on there like that. So I need some sort of idea at the back here what's going to be going on. So I need to mark that. It's going to be a bit sort of like a bit hit and miss. That's what I say anyway. It's definitely going to be a bit hit and miss. So then I'm going to shape that in there first, to do that in first. And I'm going to do that on my... My log. I have a log. It's one I laid earlier. No, not quite. It's just there. That's my log. And uh, we're going to use that because it's solid. And then we're going to be using my axe as well. My carpenter's axe. Look how old it is. Make it sharp. Got me sharp. Bring it up a little bit. Chop my head off. Not with the axe, no, because that'd be silly. Be dangerous, in fact. It hurt. And you bleed. <laughs> Not too, let's get that light in the middle there. That seems to be. Come on, come on, to your oh, hello. Oh, oh any, anyone want a baby? They're going free. Any takers? How many? No. Say no. Baby back ribs, anyone? <laughs> no. That's my little Emily. Just clean the edge up again. Get rid of the burr. Yeah, even with an axe. Got to get rid of your burr, you know. I'm looking a bit dark now. I'm going to bring it around just a touch because that might change the exposure of it. So, that's a bit better. Do apologise. Moving you about like this, I don't know. I need multi cameras, is what I need. I need cameras everywhere. Right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create that joint on the back here using an axe. If not, I'll get a saw. There we go. It's doing it. There she blows. You know what? I need a treadle lathe. That's what I need. I need to make one. There you go. I've got a proper lathe. As I say properly, I've got a well, I have a lathe. So I don't really need a treadle lathe, but it'd be pretty cool if we did have one, wouldn't it? Well, we've been planting loads of um, hazel trees, so that'd be quite good for this. Although it'll be a while before they're usable. <laughs> a long while. <laughs> there. Clean it up like that. Creating a joint, basically, sort of, so it fits the bottom rail. And what this will do, I'll explain it, this brace will do, it's not just a case, oh, it's a brace. It actually has a job, apart from just being a brace. It's a, well, it's kind of a strut. It supports by transferring the load to a fixed point. So if this is fixed on here like so, the load is on the end there because this is a fixed point. And by doing this, it basically sends the load down the brace to a fixed point here. You probably can't see me, probably, can you? <laughs> okay, a bit more on the end there, so that's not there yet. 
It's getting there. I'm coming back, don't worry. Where's my axe? Oh, there it is. So I've got to take more off this side here because it's not the right shape yet. This is dry timber. This is actually the wood pile for the firewood. Seems sacrilege, don't really. I'm going to like this. Things we burn. When we shouldn't be burning anything, really. But I suppose you've got to keep warm. What options do you have these days to keep warm, really? And there's heat pumps and stuff like that, but then you're using electricity. It's like a chisel with a handle. Well, both chisels, oh, chisels do have handles anyway, don't they? That's silly. <laughs> It's coming there, it's getting there. I'm going to have to rig up my um, other camera though at some point because they're not very wide these cameras on these phones. And because of that you don't get the, um, well you don't get the wide angle. <laughs> the aspect ratio isn't that great. How's that looking now? Always getting better. Definitely getting better. More at the bottom I think, more at the bottom there. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? There you go. Uh, either that or I bring it down lower and then it'll fit. <laughs> so I could cheat. I could put it now. That would be awful. Oh, I've got to take them off the back of that. This is indeed. It's not really, it's not really a fixed point because the, the fixings will do that. So I really want to take a bit more off the bottom here. There we go. I've got my phone out in the sun, so hopefully it doesn't overheat. And these are hats like these. Now, I would have a straw hat on, but it's finally falling to pieces as it is. I need a new one. I need a new straw hat. I wonder if I could make one. There you go, that's a lot better. There, let's have a look. How's it doing there? Is it getting better? It... Oh, it's looked better. I've got those better. Now, I want... now I've got that shape, I want to try and make it so it fits over the, the bottom brace a bit better. So we'll put that there like that. Um, pull that over there. And fork handles. You want handles? Fork handles? Oh, you want fork handles? Right, so like so, I'll sort of mark them where, because this, this is not straight, obviously, and so I'll draw make it so it fits a little bit neater. So I'm going to create a little bit of a trip over things over here, but you didn't see that, so that's okay. <laughs> now what done my axe again? How can you lose a flipping axe? <sighs> so now what I'm going to do, I want to create a bit of a V in there, if that's possible. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try, I'm going to try. You see that here? I actually cook on this on the side. I don't know if you can see it on this arrangement here. I actually cook on there in the summer. Maybe we can do that. Do some Boston baked beans or something. Oh, they're lovely. Boston baked beans. So, we'll that way like so, so I'm trying to create a V that so sits over the bottom brace bit. So they're like hovering over the top. Wench, I need a coffee! <laughs> I'll talk to you, Karen. I've got my mother-in-law here as well. The mother-in-law. <sighs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, she's been very good, actually. She's been a very good guest. I came out here yesterday morning, because we are moving the green house, you see, and the old wooden green house, you've probably seen it before, is, um, well, it's, it's worse, worse for where it is. So we decided we're going to use that old frame we had in the front garden, which is not like an old Clark garage frame. And that's going to be our greenhouse. Well, I came out here and the greenhouse was pretty much down between my 81-year-old mother-in-law and my missus. I thought, what the hell? That was quick. It's an old wooden greenhouse as well. It's got, you know, there's lots of bits stuck to it all over. I thought, that, that's pretty good going in the morning. And I thought to myself, not be that hell, I should have live streamed that. That would have been funny. 
I could have sat there reading my motorbike magazines, touring on the motorbike and on my deck chair while they're doing all the work. <laughs> Funny the things that come the first thing that comes through your head. No, that won't work. It's not a good direction, this one. Oh, let's go over there. Oh, oh, saucy. Alright, I've got wood. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Let's um, get in there. Let's get in there. It's not fine carpentry, like I said, it's wood bodgery. Got one thumb, got to keep that. You don't want to chop that off. So when, when, when you slice with a chisel, up with a chisel, with a um, axe like that, you're actually, you're not just trying to do an impact, you're trying to slice that at the same time. So it's more of a sort of a rotational sort of look, um, sort of motion. It's more effective. I was doing that. So of course I use this chisel if I wanted to, quite aptly. Alright, I'll clean it up now to the worst of it out. Hopefully that'll sit over that bottom brace a little bit better. better. Do my carpal tunnel, all the world are good. It's quite ironic actually, because I made this, like I said earlier, but um, when I had my surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome. I had that. One hand was bandaged up, literally. Looked like a like winning the football. So I had one hand. So there was Caroline and my daughter Yasmin helping so we could make this gate. <laughs> so we had to split all this. See that? This is split. That was split. All these are split. It was firewood. There was logs, literally. Like a wood pile. Now I'm using an old right ro 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 sorby chisel. It's a lovely chisel this is. Especially with sharp. Sharpish. Let's see what that looks now. Do 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 do. I love me tender. Don't give up his day job. I love me true. I never let me go. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, oh, that's looking good there. Oh, you like that? I think. How's it on there? Now, I think I need to. I'm going to taper this down a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit rough. So we'll. um. I'm gonna keep tripping over things. Oh, I'm terrible, I am. So we're gonna just clean this edge up here a little bit because otherwise it's gonna be just like that sharp edge on the end there. It's gonna look an awful. My phone gets hot. Ooh. Ooh. They're quite good these OnePlus phones. Apart from my new one, that's the old one. I hope everything's okay. That's my um my old OnePlus Six, and I love that phone. Absolutely love it. Been brilliant phone, best phone I've ever had. But now the new ones, I got rid of the blooming air headphone socket, you know, the TRS TRI socket on the phone. Flip a nightmare. So you don't rely on this dongle thing, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And uh, I recorded a video yesterday for this channel using my phone instead of my camera. I should use the camera, really, think about it. And all the audio was really badly distorted. And I can't stand that. I can't, we can't use it, you just can't use it. If I, if I don't want to listen to it, who, who else is going to? It's bad enough having to listen to my Norfolk accent. Oh my god, talk about Norfolk accent! I've got a comment on my video. It's Bushman, someone, yeah. He happens to live where I come from. Not just Norfolk, no. The same flipping village. What's the odds of that? Salos. I thought, what the hell? Nah. And then we, uh, I told what road we used to live on. We used to live on, and then he, he said, oh, do you remember Bob Biddle? I said, yeah, I remember Bob Biddle. I also remember pulling him out of the gutter, because he was drunk. He'd been down to Bell Pub. And he'd come back on his push bike. Yeah, he ain't got a licence. Come back on his push bike. Drunk. <laughs> well, I think he's like this, he's like on the side. I re twice I've had to rescue him for that. B bring him home. Oh, Bob Biddle, because he was a character. Really good songwriter, actually. Just uh, like some people, they kind of 
they just can't get a grip of their lives, really, I suppose. He wasn't a very nice man, to be honest. He was, he was a bit of a, well, didn't like him. He's a bit arrogant. I imagine he'd be, he'd be the kind of be a, a Brexiter. <gasps> Did I say it? Oh no, don't say it on this channel, Michael. Don't say it. Don't go there. All right, and then go this way. Um, let's clean some of these. I don't need things going to be like called splinters, you see. I don't want my dogs getting splinters. Caroline, well, that's all about that. But dogs, no. Don't want them getting splinters. Get the little bits of wood in their paws. So to get rid of all the bits of wood that potentially could cause a splinter. So any like little cracks and stuff like that. Like I said, normally I'll be using my draw, draw knife for this. I'll be using this. Did you sharpen that one? Brilliant thing. Well, I've had it for years. I put new put out new handles on it several times. But I'm using an axe instead. Seems brutal. It does brutal. It don't matter. Could use nads. But I ain't got one. So I can't. I need nads. That's what I need. Nads is like a, a axe, but the, instead of the handle, effectively comes out of that side of the blade. Not like your got the wind now. Not <laughs> yeah, yeah, itself. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> so that's going to go on there like so. A bit of luck. As you can see, the camera's all the way over there, like you're miles away. Should have brought you closer. But only often up to see if, if it's good enough. Oh, it's looking quite good actually. Oh, that's so saucy. I could do a uh, there, little there. That's good there. And how's it doing down there? I'm quite happy with that. I think I think it's good enough. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Something sharp there, isn't it? No, so that's going to have to be cut off because you've got to have that bit sticking out the top there. So we'll mark that. So I'll grab my nice pencil, my mechanical pencil. I might, do, I might go order some more of these pencils. That was um, Glasgow Kiss. He got me this pencil. It's very much appreciated that it is. And um, I use it all the while now, this mechanical pencil. I'll show you in a second. Uh, I think maybe bring it up there like that, maybe. Oh, that. Oh, that. Oh, that. Maybe I like that. Like that. And that'll be cut. I'll cut that to length. Probably just with the axe. Hack it off with the axe. Yeah, I'll show you that pencil one. Yeah, because I was going to just copy this pencil. Which, like I say, I use it all the time now. And it's a mechanical pencil. But it has, I don't know, 2.8 millimetre leads. Quite thick leads. Um, but you've got a little sharpener for the point in the handle and they mark really well so um, even though I normally use 2B pencils um, what I was using but now I just use this all the time now so I might order some more of these and then uh, I'll do a review on them so different ones let's see what the, what the difference next oh here it is in my hand I'm losing the plot so I'll chop that off the end there so we'll bring it a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing Let's have some close-up action, shall we? Whoa. Oh yeah. There you go. Da, 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 da. Let's bring it a bit closer. I'll bring that a little bit. There you go. You look at my knees now, aren't you? Look at my knobbly knees. So um, I marked that there. So I'm gonna cut it to length, and then I'm gonna sh shape it up. Oh, that was violent. Now I'm going to shape the end up. There we go. Oh, it fell off. Oh, that's good, is it? There we go. There we go. There we go. So, so bringing it around as I go. And I've got to do the other side. This, this is like axe porn, isn't it? It's not tractor porn. No, we don't want any tractor porn. Leave that to Neil Parrish. <clears throat> Did I say it again? Oh dear. There you go. Uh -huh. I'm quite happy with this channel. Actually. It's, it seems to be growing quite nicely at the moment. Um, considering it's been, well, dormant. I haven't actually um, done much on this channel for 
I haven't done that on this channel. I was trying to put that right. You know, just to um, revive it really. Fine work with an axe. Oh, I'll oh, just stay there, you. Just took the edge off. Right, so I need to clean that up now, make sure there's no horrible like, splintery bits and stuff like that. First of all, I'm going to just tack it with a wire brush. Wire brush in an electric drill or an angle grinder is brilliant. All that polishes the wood. It's amazing, really. I've done it loads of times with angle grinder. Let's use it for this first one. It looks like it needs a bit of splint in there. And there. There we go. We'll run a bit of sandpaper over it. Or sand. Because <laughs> I'm a cheat. <gasps> no, don't cheat, Mark. Don't do it. Sometimes it makes sense to use tools because at least then they actually the job gets done and that's usually a good thing don't worry i'm coming back i'll just get my tool Ooh, ready yeah we're ready it's an air sander so let's just sand it up make sure there's no nasty splintery bits <laughs> I know, the wood bodger wouldn't have one of these. That I do know. I'm sure there's going to be criticism. But hey, I'll say that these. Well, there you go. It's no IKEA. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> In there. Just make sure you've got no like nasty rough bits to, you know, to um, damage your hands on. Or get splinters with, you know what I mean? Not that, do we? Not splinters. There we are. Nearly there. Nearly there. Oh my god, it's like the kids, isn't it? Are we ready there yet? Yeah, there we go. I'm quite happy at that, I think that's good enough. Be the cleanest part of the gate, I will. So it don't always have to be square and straight. No, it could be wonky, like me. Let's see what you're saying. Oh no, is anyone talking? Anyone talking? <laughs> oh yeah, velvet level with you. Oh, a battle axe. <laughs> uh, did you like my picture? On, you know, if anyone came from the other channel, did you like my picture? It's my, yeah, my Anne Widdicombe picture. The one of me on that bench there. So, it was a bit saucy, wasn't it? There you go. <laughs> Lovely day, old battle axe. Look at that lovely weather. It's grim and oh, oh I'm sorry, hair that Sophie. I hope you're well. No, it's lovely hair. Look at that. It's sunny. All oh, sunny it is. We've got lazy people over there. Get back to work. Get back to work. You come over here and eat my food, drink my drink, sleep in my bed. Not that bed. No. And now you're sitting there and have a cup of tea. She's been doing nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. I wish I could, oh actually, I probably could show you. I think the internet you see, because I'm connected to the house in that moment. But I could probably show you. You see that greenhouse there? I don't know if anyone saw before, there was a wooden one there before. That, well, I think greenhouse, that little frame on the right hand side of the tin shed. You probably see a great thing. Well, that used to be in the front garden. But there used to be a greenhouse just there, a wooden one. Kind of wooden one with a polytunnel, wooden polytunnel. And it's all rotten, it's gone a bit kind of crap. And you got to support both said, well, no, enough's enough. Anyway, we had this frame, because the wind took the cover. 
just like an old, like a cart garage thing. And um, so that's where we have, which basically that's going to be the uh, replaced in the old greenhouse. So that was the plan. And uh, this, this uh, skinny Ann Widdicombe type over there, on the left. <laughs> 81 years old she's doing that. Okay, mate, by lunchtime, it's all down. Greenhouse is all gone. And not, not, not a word of a lie, that's quite, there's a lot of screws in that greenhouse. It's all wooden borders around the bottom, all wooden frames and what have you. And uh, it was gone. I, like, oh, I didn't mean that greenhouse, but it was too late. No, they already took it down, they had. So like, come here, eat my food, drink my drink, sleep in my bed, and take down the wrong greenhouse. <laughs> No, it's been a gem, really. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, uh, sorry, filthy devil. Oh, no, it is absolutely lovely here. Hello, Simon Says. Good afternoon to you, too. Oh, hello, Bass. No, I used to, but I can't anymore because my hands are buggered. I can't, I can't throw out the guitar as well. I've got, I've got to sort of take and start and learn to do drums instead now. Because if you drop a stick, that's not so bad. But if you drop your guitar, you don't do that. <laughs> they call them baguettes here. Yeah, drumsticks are called baguettes in France. <laughs> but you play drums with your baguettes. That'd be quite funny, actually. Yeah, I got a mandolin there. That's a um, nice little mandolin as well, my ukuleles and that. And I, I sold my um, guitars. Though. I've got one guitar still, but I can't play them anymore. I was never very good anyway. Uh... Pain in the bum. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, you like it, do you? I did, did, oh, you saucy devil. You said you wouldn't complain. <laughs> All right, you didn't think she'd be into that, did you? <laughs> anyway, where were we? Anyway, we've got a bit of wood up right here. So let's go install that. Hello, Steve C. I hope you're well. Probably haven't heard from you for a while. Hope you're good, buddy. Yeah, we're just doing a bit of woodwork and a bit of wood bodgery. This is my old gate. That was our stair gate. Well, still is our stair gate to keep the dogs from upstairs, even though they go upstairs. Little devils. And they go onto my bed. The hairy way and ticks fall off into our bed. It's lovely it is, I tell you. But anyway, that's, that, that's the stair gate I put in to, put, to keep the dogs. But the thing is, it sagged a little bit. Only by a little bit, but that, that was getting my nerves. So I took it off and I've glued and re-glued and but I've actually had screws because it's on pegs. What's happened? The pegs have shrunk. And then what's happened over a period of time, the wood had kind of, you know, it, it went flaccid, pretty much. Hey, that, nice hair there, buddy. I'm glad, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. The other channel's not doing so well. Although the last cut free fed has actually done quite well. I was quite surprised, so we'll see. We'll see, I'll just, I'll just keep plodding along and see what happens with that. But anyway, I like to do this as well. So what happens is, because this is the fixed point, the gate here, the loaders are here, and that load has to transfer somewhere. At the moment, it can be destroyed, so, because there's no um, diagonal support, hence the brace. So if you like ledge and brace doors, you always have a brace on a ledge and brace door. That's why it's called a ledge and brace. If it's ledge only, you only have the ledges, and this was ledge only. And it was absolutely fine, but since it's obviously shrunk and done other stuff, it's, it's sagged only by about an inch. Not by a lot, but the, because of that, the, um, the latch here kept missing the plate a little bit. So because, because, yeah, it just wasn't right. Um, so I'll we'll put a brace in just to make sure of it so it can't go down again. Go down on me. Da, 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 da. So yeah, that's what we've got there. That's going to go on there like so. And I'm just going to do a bit, I'm not going to, oh, I might peg it. I'll peg it. No, I'm going to go and screw it. Because I don't want to do it again. Because this is going to shrink again. So that's going to go on there like so. Now I'm going to glue and screw it from behind into that piece of wood and that just what happens is then that load as it's trying to go down over there the load will actually be transferred down to a fixed point here at the bottom so that's why you have a ledge and braced so i'll grab that pencil i'll mark whereabouts it comes and i'll know where i'm gonna put uh the glue it's not that's not gonna be a very good really i don't know one bothering glue actually because it's there's not much marion surface there casca might know but that the thing about the glue is it does actually, where there's contact, it stops some of the um, bugs and stuff being able to get in there and create a home. Don't want bugs. No bugs, thank you. So 
We're going there. Uh, look at that. Look at that is. Look at that. Yeah. So I'll put a mark on there like that. A mark on there like that. Oh, come back. And like that. And like that. And I'll know. Well, within reason. I don't think there's any point. There ain't no point. So I'm not going to do it. So that's all. I'm going to just clamp that on the place. I'm going to do it dry. Do it dry. Ooh. Can I get salt? Maybe. I could make life easier, couldn't I? I could use a quick clamp. Single hand quick clamp, that would have been easier. But hey oh, I've got a G clamp. Or see, depending where you are. So we're going to just clamp that on in. Oh, and try to get that into position, into the correct position, because it's not at the moment. Up you come. Oh, oh that's your balls. That's your balls. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. I need a sea shanty or something. Weatherman also did. Look at the weatherman. Mm -hmm. oh, I just need a bit of tapping. A bit of jiggery pokery on there, because it needs to go up a bit further, because the bottom isn't at the moment marrying up. Da -da 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 -da. That's looking good. And it's looking down here. Oh, that's looking bit here. Just hit it, that's what you do, just hit it. Yeah, a bit of wood. Done it. Yeah, I'll do it. If I get another clamp, oh, I've got another clamp somewhere. What well, up? Oh, it's over there. There's one I prepared earlier. So, get this other clamp down here. Now I'll give it a clean up and then we'll use some linseed oil on it just to line, line up and use the linseed oil to clean it. <laughs> That's what it really needs. Really good clean. So, um, linseed oil, raw linseed oil, is actually f it's made from crushed flax seeds. I think Lynn is its um, scientific name. And uh, there you go. That's better. And it's a, it's a really good good thing. But the problem with linseed oil, raw linseed oil, you know, just ordinary uh, ground or, or crushed, sorry, uh, flax seeds, is that it's, well, it can cause, well, it doesn't go off very quickly. The reason for that, the first reason, one of the main reasons is the fact. It has a certain amount of water content left in raw linseed oil, and the water retards the actual um, linseed oil from going off. So it basically, it still goes off, but it takes absolutely it takes weeks to go off properly. Now, there's various ways of uh, uh, we call, you know changing the linseed oil. And one one of the ways is they call it boiling the linseed oil. Now I boil my linseed oil the old-fashioned way. Surprise, surprise, and. Um, Whereas you can buy boiled linseed oil, you know, even uh, Danish oil and whatever, they're all, it's all pretty much boiled linseed oil. But boiled linseed oil that you buy in the shops isn't actually boiled, no, because it's quite a volatile thing to do. It has a flash point, which obviously you can burn your house down. It's not a great idea, so if you do do it, you've got to do it outside. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating that. I'm not burning the house down, but um, not today. Because I've got, I've got a thermometer coming, a digital thermometer, a probe thermometer for my linseed oil. Because um, I've always done it by, because um, I, just, I just know when it's ready, if that makes any sense, because I've done it so many times. Um, but I don't really want to do a video like that, because I think it's, it's, I want people to, to have a go at it, I'll make sure they're doing it safely. So I'm going to get them on and show how to do it properly. That'll be a video, no video. So that should be here uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow? The Thursday. The Thursday. Thursday is here. The thermometer, so I'll, um, I'll do it. I might even do it live, even boil some linseed oil. But always do it outside. But anyway, the other way, the one you buy linseed oil from the supermarket, well, not a supermarket, actually, you can buy linseed oil in the supermarkets here. In fact, I can show you because my linseed oil is here. Sealed in. Yeah, that's my linseed oil. So that's not boiled linseed oil, that's just raw linseed oil. And it's cheap. It costs about three euros, three or four euros for a bottle. Yeah, a litre of uh, linseed oil, but that's raw. And because it's raw, it takes absolutely ages to go off. So people still use it, what have you, but you should really boil it first, either by boiling it, literally, but outside, and make sure you watch my video once I made it, or they use chemical hardeners. Now, if you're an eco buff or, you know, um, eco warrior, you're not gonna really want extra chemicals in your linseed oil. Plus, some, de some people actually drink this stuff. Yeah, I know, and it's disgusting, but they do. Yeah, I don't know why, but they do. Yeah, 
but obviously you don't want uh, chemicals, they're solvents, they add into it, which pretty much expels a lot of the moisture and changes the chemical structure of, of the um, linseed oil. That's a really good preservative in the sense that it, um, well, it retar you know, resists moisture. So I mean, we've got that on there like that, I'm quite happy at that, I think that's, that's good. So what we're going to do, I could lay it down flat and do it, or do it where it is, I'll probably just do it where it is. I'm just going to screw it from behind. Oh, no, not like that. Oh dear. This is, this is, this is a family show. It's a family show, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> after that, I digress. So I'm going to bring it over here and hopefully I can hold this so you can see what I'm doing. Oh my god, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'll just have to let it down. Move that out of the way. Move them out of the way. And just lay it down on there and we'll do it on there like so. That makes more sense. Oh, actually, it look, look, looks in keeping. So it doesn't look like it's an after thought. It should have been a premier thought, but it wasn't. No. And I'm cheating because I'm not going to be doing, because I've got a lot to do today. And also, no, I'm not cooking pegs. That's a way for the dry as well. I'm going to put the gate back. So the dog's going up. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, well, I've put screws in the back here and put some more pegs in the back of the hair as well, but that's been clamped up and left for a while, but <laughs> screws are poking through. We need to um, grind them off as well, because I don't think that's very safe when the screws poke through like that. No. So we're going to screw and plug these um, into place, and hopefully then that transfer that load from this um, brace down into the gate. To a fixed point. So we'll grab a drill. Grab a drill! Not a granny, grab a drill. Talk about a drill, where is my drill? Oh, where'd that go? I had drill bits and now I've lost them. Is that right, innit? I'll just go and grab a drill bit. What do I do with them? Ah, I found them! Well, I'll bring that as well. Got my full hammer. Handy little hammer, too. So, I've got I'm not using a can, so I'm just going to use the drill and plugs into the holes. But first of all, put the work drill bit in. We're going to drill the hole, put so in each of those. We'll put two in this one. Put this room. Well, top there. I'm just using a 10mm drill bit instead of my counter sink, and the reason for that is we can't find a flipping cat 10 more counter sink. Put down somewhere, and it's probably, it's probably still on the bench in the workshop. I'm just going to use, very slowly, you can't go too quick, so that'll grab because of the way it's um, ground. So, um, just enough to get that below the surface. It's on the side, so just pulse it. You pulse it if, it, if you do grab, or then it stops, doesn't it, you know? The same if you're using a screwdriver. I'll show you. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If you've got uh, if you've got a stubborn screw. Look, they've got some screws. So I'm just gonna grab some screws. Got a screw on there. That's good. I'll show you what I mean. All me long. Not on. That was longer screws as well. I don't know if you can still hear me. Those screws, that's, probably, that's probably good. And then we'll grab these over here. Four by four, fifties. I'm a coming, I'm a coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Pro probably lost a bit of audio just then, maybe. Maybe not. How, how far these things go. I'm getting a bit of a mess here, aren't I? So once we get that screwed there, we'll clean it up and then we'll, we'll get a coat of linseed oil. Um, like I said, I've already boiled my linseed oil. So I ain't got to do that. I am going to do a video of it. So that one looks like a good size screw for that. Now, if you've got a stubborn screw, we've got a bit closer, so show you what I mean. You know when you hear people with their screwdriver and they're going, they're chewing up the head of their screw, yeah, they've got all gnarly and stuff, and they look at their screwdriver bit and they've got all gnarly. That's because you haven't allowed the screw bit, screwdriver bit, in this case the PZ2, yeah, Posi Drive 2, to fall in, back into the head of the screw. So if you just go like that, you go crazy like that, what's happening is it ride, it'll ride out of the screw when it's worn. And you'll never actually screw it in. But if you pulse it, 
like that, if you've got a stubborn screw, what happens is that screw, that screwdriver bit falls back into the head of the screw every time. Yeah, so let's have a little trick. It works a treat, it does. Do it all the time. Put that in there like that. There you go. One. And these are only four mil screws. So these be like uh, number eight in old money. But they're 50 mil long, so it's two inches long in old money too. Make sure. Oh, just poking through. That's, that'll do. That doesn't matter. So I'm going to grind them off, you see. It's not matter. If there's any perky free screwy bits. Right there. Oh, oh so that one did as well. I poked as well. But never mind. Like I say, I'm going to deal with that in a minute. All right, so I've now got four screws in. Oh, no, I've got four screws in. Did I put four screws in? Yes, I did. So I've got four screws in there. I'm going to take the clamp off now. Take off the other clamp. Maybe no, I'll leave that one on for a minute because I'm going to whack a screw into that if I can get one in that is if there's the angle of the dangle to do it got the angle of the dangle won't you? then we'll put the plugs in I've pre-cut some plugs yeah there's room there the thing is this I could do leaving that clamp on I could leave that clamp on I've then got the clamp in the way they can go there that right there I know I'm mumbling on mumble 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 okay it's gonna go in there like so Then we're going to go in there like so. It's quite hard to make sure that, yeah, the, the, unless you use lots of different size screws. But I'm, all I'm going to do is get the um, angle grinder and just whip off the heads of the screws if they're poking through any places. No biggie. A bodging, you see. Put the screw in there. Another trick I usually do if, I got, if I'm screwing into hard, I'll normally have a, a block of wax. I just stick there. I'll tell you what works really well. You know the um oh the little tea like handles. I never on, on the go because it's all melted in there in a little pot pot. You've basically got a pot of molten um wax and just stick it in there. You get a nice coating on your all the way around your your, your um screw. So that's two things. One it obviously allows the lubricant, gives you a bit of lube because you're screwing. Yeah, and then also it's um the wax helps protect the screw from rusting. Well, that did it. Pull it up, it did. I might put another one in there, actually, because that worked really well. We'll put one up here and all. We'll have a couple in there. Turn the braces on there, then. And then I've got, to, I've got to trim off all these plugs that I've put in, where I put screws in. Or you can just sand them, even, just to, so they're not so... If you want to see it, there's a few actual dials that actually work their way out as well, because the wood's shrunk. In there, mm, it's about there, ain't it? I've got another dog here today. Little tiny thing, like, like a little rat is. He's not very well trained though, he nicks food off the table. My Waddy would never do that. Because my Waddy is amazing. Oh, 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 he's down there, he's laying over there. Oh. On an old um, piece of foam, an old, old cushion out of the um, out of an old caravan. I'm put that one in there. Well, that did it. That's a good screw. Oh, yes. So now I'm going to put the plugs in. I'm going to grab the. Uh, what do I put? Oh, plugs. That's plugs there. These will do. We'll use them. We need a screwdriver to pop them out with. I'll bring you in a bit closer as well in a second. <clears throat> now this voice says it's not good, very good voice. It's only a um, you can't say it anyway because it's obviously the other side. Down there. It's not it's not a great voice, but it works. I think it's like fifteen quid. That's really cheap. Silver lines. It's Chinese crap, but it's just um, it does. Yeah, you know, I didn't really want to be putting a record voice out there unless I could get an older one. That's. Uh, Really good money because I, I wouldn't want to ruin it. I do have a voice screw somewhere actually. I could, um, I'm still going to do it actually. We're going to make a voice because I've got a voice screw and I've actually got a couple of them now. And uh, I make a traditional traditional um, voice on here as well, not on here because they're great for when you're carving that as well. You see, 
So let's bring in a bit closer. La 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 la, la 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 la. <clears throat> Is anyone talking? Is anyone talking? Or you just watch my beautiful face? Huh? Bernard, uh, just remembered why I haven't oiled the porch floor since. The dogs keep trying to lick it off while it was still wet. <laughs> they do. So it was as linseed all for you. Animals, they love it for some reason. And also, um, you know, you got putty windows. You just put your, you, got, you just throw your glass. You put all your windows up. You, know, you put your knife down, clean. Oh, 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 look at that! Isn't it lovely. You put your windows up. You're sitting there on the bog, peering out of your, your freshly putty window, and the little birds are coming up to you. They are pecking on the window. They are peck, 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 peck. They are. What are you doing, one? Yeah. You think, oh, that's sweet. And then until you open the window, you realise what they're doing is actually stealing your flicking putty. Your window putty, you know, linseed oil putty. It's basically chalk and linseed oil. That's what it is, really. Make your own. Little devils. So, for some reason, these animals, they do like. Yeah. They're, um, well. <laughs> the linseed oil. Oh, remember the TIE Fighter? Well, I've been trying to get some vid video of it. I managed to get one bit video. I need a bit more. Um, well, I've got the uh, camera set up over there. I can see it on its stand in front of the TIE Fighter. <laughs> That's a bit random up there, isn't it, to be honest. I was going to move it because I thought it looked ridiculous. And then all of a sudden I, was, I noticed there's a bird in it. There's birds in the TIE Fighter. So that was the TIE Fighter that we were making. We are doing that live, if you remember. I had to quickly finish it off because it was, it was, just, it was just taking too long. Um, so anyway, we've got, we've got great tits in there. So hence the camera set up on its stand. It's one of them trial cameras. I'm very really pleased with it actually. It's a really good little trial camera. The only thing, the stupid thing about it is, is that the, the glass cover that goes over the lens on the front is perfectly flat. And because of that, any side light creates flare. So as the sun comes round, if you leave it for long periods of time, you get a lot of flare with it. It's a bit of an issue. So um, I've made actually a lens hood for it with a, um, a bit of a skinny inner tube tire. <laughs> inner tube, sorry, skinny inner tube. I made it into a little lens hood. Just stretched it over and it works. I see, it looks like it's going to work. So we'll see. But yeah, the image quality of it, I was, I was quite impressed. So I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, we'll come back. Oh, there's my Wally. And if you have grandchildren, you get a flip and miss. Look at that. Look at my Wally. He's so good. Yeah, look, there he is. And then I've got my Dora. She's down there. She, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Hmm? That's what she's saying. You're in Dora. You are lovely, aren't you? Good little girl, aren't you? It's different my legs for. Hmm? She likes her bum rubbed. She, she, might, she might stick her tongue out. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You good Are you good at it? You good at it? Your tongue coming out yet? Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, maybe. She's a little devil, she is. Funny little thing. She, I think she's the man of the family, that one. She reminds me of, um, well, she doesn't remind me, actually. My, my friends I go motorbiking with, they, yeah. His wife, she says, she, little Pandora's like Anna Widdicombe. She calls her Anne. Very offensive, that is. Really offensive. Anyway, there we go. So let's bring it down there, look so. And we're going to put the plugs in now. So you pop them in with a little bit of glue. I'm just going to use a bit of PVA. Um, I was getting concerned because I couldn't find here in France. Five, I used to buy five, five litres of time of D3 PVA glue. Then it suddenly clicked in my head, well, I don't use that much anymore. So I'm always using cascamine. So what do I need? Uh, like five litres. I don't. So I just bought a litre bottle. Well, it was, it was 750 gram, so it's not a litre. Now, if you see here, that's when my Wally got a bit stressed, trying to eat his way through the gate. Yeah. That's when we used to have him downstairs. We weren't allowed upstairs. Then we succumbed. We, we gave in. So that little joint there actually looks quite neat now. The way it laps over there, I think it looks okay. So it look, it's looking quite in keeping with the gate as a whole. I think so anyway, you probably don't. You probably think I'm in a Neanderthal. You're yeah, flipping Neanderthal. <laughs> so I'll clean this up and we'll get some oil on that. Then I'm going to do the, um, my draw horse. What I'll use for my wood bodgery. Four hammer, stick that in there. You probably can't see that. You'll see the other side then. Now I just popped a bit of glue into the holes. But I'll show you another technique for that. Let's pop this over. Do the other side. Oh, get that metal away from that blade edge. Do that. Damage the edge. 
I could do with a bit more room on this bench to do these sort of jobs, really. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, you know, holes to plug with the plugs. Now the little trick is, if you do if, if you're doing fine work, not like this, obviously, because this is not fine work, is it? <laughs> you can't get further, further from the fine work, can you? I put a little bit of glue on top of something like that. Another trick is if you've got if you've got up and put it on and you've got a roll of uh, masking tape, just put a few strips of masking tape down and on your bench and then you can just peel it off afterwards. That's a treat. So um what I do when I got my plugs, such as this one here, if I'm doing fine work, not with this, because I'll just blob it in a minute. I'll put a bit of glue on there like that, but then I'll just because I don't want you see there's no point putting glue on the bottom of the plug. No. Because if you put glue on the bottom of the plug, there's nothing for the glue to. You actually need to glue the sides of the plug. And the other thing is, if you ever want to remove the screw and you fill the plug up with glue, fill the hole up with glue, your screw heads are going to be full of glue, which makes it hard to get your screw out. If you ever need to get, you know, pop the plug out and remove the screw. So what you do is you grab your, your plug and you literally just do it, you twist it against some glue. So, and that is actually all you need to put your plug in. And you, then you whack it into the hole. Wow. Let me just twist it around like so. But I don't really need you doing this because in the other day, this is not fine carpentry. Like I say, it's, you can't get any far, further from fine carpentry if you tried. So I just generally, you know, if I'm doing something, I'll just blob it around and twist it around. So I make sure I go all, all the way around the now. So I'm on the end of four. Move here as well. Just twist, twist. And then it's in the hole. That's enough. But if you're doing fine work where you don't want to get a bit of glue everything where uh, and you want to limit the amount of work you've got to do afterwards to tidy up, well then that's what you do. Yeah, like I said, you just do that, twist it around there like that, and that way you'll make sure you've got glue where you need it. And not all, all over your work surface. And these are 10 mil plugs. A bit confusing at times because I've got both sizes. I've got the imperial and you know, the 3A and Various other sizes of that, but all in an imperial. Don't like imperial. No. Although I do use imperial sometimes. Whatever's closest to the mark. That was I cheat. Now, I don't know if you've seen, you wouldn't see this. I'm making a video about this. I actually, um, I made myself a Kiriyashi marker knife. That's it. And I made that out of an old saw blade. I'll be uploading the video once I finish editing it. So, um, yeah, it's very simple. Two bits of walnut for the handle. Thing. And then I cut the uh, piece of steel from the old uh, table saw blade, a round table saw blade, into the, the shape that I wanted, it's what we call a kiridashi. And the bit of a marker knife like this is, it's the ground, is the grind, the primary grind is only on one side. Now where that's important is, if you want an accurate mark, you only want it on one side. Now this is a right-handed marking knife. You can use a carving knife if you want, but it fits in the hand lovely, it really does. And because it's right-handed, I always mark from the right, obviously, because I'm right-handed. But you need a flat surface there to go against your, what would be your, uh, I don't know, your combination square or your rule or whatever you're marking against. And it gives you a nice flat surface. And that way, that edge will be exactly where, generally exactly where the edge of your uh, rule or combination square or square, whatever you're using to mark with, you know, to, uh, to, you know, to mark off. So, um, yes, two bits of walnut. These are actually stainless steel bolts that I've used. Now, I've used bolts, not rod. Because what happens, because you've got threads on the bolts, and these hand, this handle is literally glued on with arrowdite, you know, epoxy resin. And because of the threads, they get locked into the handles. They can't slide off. So it, it really works well. Well, it's a simple idea. Then you just grind off the heads. Oh, I've got a little bit over there, so I don't see the dark around the actual screws themselves. Well, because of, they got hot, effectively they burned around the hole a little bit. But I don't mind, it doesn't matter, any of those at all. And uh, it looked all pristine when I first done it, and now it's looking all like I've been touching it with glue fingers. But it doesn't matter, because it's, it's there to do a job, isn't it, at all. But it works really well. So anyway, I'll be uploading the video about that soon. Once I finish editing it. How dare you come back, you wench! Oh, OK. I, I like that. You've been working! <laughs> so um, I'm going to cut off these heads 
or the excess of the actual plugs and clean them up. I'm not, I'm not that worried. So these are pegs, these ones over here are. These are actually what hold it together, all these big long ones, but they, they stay. I, I don't like fake stuff. If it makes any sense. I, and I really don't like fake people. But, um, so anyway, so it's just... Well, I said I don't like I don't, I don't understand. I'm all natural, you see. <laughs> More ways than one. <laughs> you can peel it off. I'm using the mark knife to do it, see? To peel it off. That way. So, yeah, you can sharpen it up. Well, I just sharpened up using a diamond sharpener. It's a, it's a cheapy one. Nothing, you know, you don't need to spend huge amounts of money if you don't, you know, what, what, you don't want to. You don't really need to sometimes. You know, some things you've got a choice with. Like, for instance, my Festool Domino Dowler. That's, as a power tool, a hand power tool, it's very expensive. It's about 1,200 euros. But there's nothing else out there that does that job. So, um, not quickly like that one anyway. You could use Raybo, I suppose, but it's not the same. So I bought, yeah, and I've had about five or six, about five, maybe six years now. And what a brilliant tool that is. So I need a little hammer, I use my little ball paint hammer, because there's, um, I see there's some old nails, but the heads are poking through down because the wood has shrunk. So I'm just going to tap them down this place. Yeah. Yeah. I've been bombarded, he's got my daughter coming over. Oh, my oldest daughter. This weekend, for a few days. I don't know. Don't get left alone, do I? Right, here we go. Let's flip that over. On the side, finish that off. See if there's some there I glued on earlier. Uh, is there any more nails poking through? I know I've got some screws poking through, which isn't great, but I need to clean off. I'll do that with angle grinder. Create some sparks. Oh, there's one there. Nail. No. Is there because the wood is shrunk? Caused that. So let's peel them off using my marker knife again. It doesn't matter if, you know, they're down to sharpen again. It takes me seconds. We'll go away. These, ones, these are hard wood. Well, really hard. Peel it. Come on, you. You can do it. Good enough for that. I'm there. Oh, it's a chisel. It's a chisel. It's hiding. Uh, Mallet's over there. I'll use the full hammer. Well, that was a mistake. Ah, oh, that's fine. That's good. That's good. It was cutting towards his hand. Now, whenever I do anything like this, I never, I don't give it a load of welly. It's quick control, yeah? It's, it's, like, it's like, yeah, think of the timing method. We won't get into that, but you know what I mean. It, it's all about control. So you, you always do short poles or short strokes. You're not trying to go like, and all of a sudden you slip and you slice leg off. Or somebody else. Good. Like that. That's good, good, good. That one needs to come off. I'm going to be careful with that because we have the iron of the hinge. These hinges are old. They used to be on the old shutters of the house. So if I can reuse stuff, I will. So you can keep them, you see. And also, they're made better. So where they're forged, modern hinges are literally just bent <laughs> with a big machine. So things have been done properly. And they're better for them. That's good. Oh, um, it's getting good, it's getting good. There's a few more there to come off. I've got these new fresh ones that got to come off as well. So, something good there. Nah, I'm just going to whip these two off. I'm going to cut there. 
Now if you've just um, put the plugs in, when you do the chisel, don't try and uh, just go straight across. You've got to go down a little bit while you're doing it because otherwise what happens is you'll actually lift the plugs out of the hole. I'm just going to go a slicing action with the chisel. If you go too far down at once, what does you, you can end up, uh, well, I just did. That's right. I was getting worried in, but it's fine. Okay, that's good. Now you can use a flush cut saw if you like, like a pull, like a Japanese pull saw, um, which I do have, but not over here. That works, yeah, fine if you haven't got a sharp chisel. There you go, it's doing it. I didn't get my coffee, did I? <laughs> Is it because I called her a wench? Hey, wench! <laughs> Poor Caroline. She does suffer with me. Oh, there goes my compressor. Probably been a bit pedantic here, really. It's a very rustic gate. It's meant to be rustic. Oh no, I've got to put a notch in my chisel. That's good, that one's good, that's off, that's off, that's off, that's off. Have a nail there. Any more nails poking out? Any more nails? Any more nails? No? Can you just have some more, sir? Right, okay, so that's pretty much there. We do get rid of all this horrible nasty stuff, as in dog hair. Um, so obviously, when I put the oil on it, which we'll do in a second, and then we'll get on with the other job. So on the outside. God, he ain't eat enough, nor that. That naughty Wally. What's he like? Right, so, a stiff brush would be a good idea. And the airline would be a good idea as well. I'm gonna just go and get a brush other than the wire brush. I'll be back. Don't go away. Is it over here? Always oh, say it. I've got a brush. I returned. I did. <coughs> I got a brush. Oh, I've got to cut those, got to, also got to um, cut those old screws off that are poking through as well. Some dog hair. Come on, dogs. Mommy, why have we got dogs? There's dog hair everywhere. That's better. But it doesn't look too out of place. Just once that's been all oiled in, anyway, okay? I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. It's like it's been there all, all along, apart from the colour. Right, so I'm just gonna get the. Uh, look, I've got that a minute ago. Just gonna grab the angle grinder, and we're just gonna go tuck it. And then we'll um, put some oil on that, and put it on the side, let that dry, and then we'll get on with the uh, draw horse. Here's my angle grinder. Oh no, I've got to create some sparks. So I've, when I built this bench, I thought ahead I did, I put a socket in it. Yeah, so any little screws that are poking through, there's one there, so I'll whip that off. There's nothing inflammable, is there? Nope, apart from me.
there? No. What I've got to do now is just burn the tops of the plugs so it won't so obvious. The friction. I don't smoke. I ain't doing intercourse. Mm. I didn't say it loud, did I? Oh dear me. Mm -hmm. I was smoking. Uh, my son's father is always getting up smoking. And um, I say getting up smoking, he's still smoking with one of the e cigarettes. He's saving a flipping fortune. He was spending 140 euros a month. Uh, not spending, that's what he's saving by going on to e cigarettes. Obviously, he's spending more than that. He, he was on rollies as well, wasn't he? So he's on, you know, he's buying pouches. side. Hang on, I'll just do a screw over there, don't I? Let's poke for a little bit over there. There is. It's over there. <laughs> Poking through. Apart from the um, uh, stainings, we'll do that now. And also, then we'll do that draw horse, which is quite a cool thing. What do you think of my snake? My bit of carving there, look. Did a bit of carving I did. With that wire brush. A bit of... Just got to brush the snake's hair. numerals there, I wonder what that says. If you know, put it in the chat. Don't forget to click like if you've done so already. going to give that a bit of an air line down, air lying down, air line as in the air line and then put the blowy thing in and then we'll stay this bench. I mean, I have a, if I'm going to do this out here I need another somewhere else to put my stuff, like another bench or trolley or something so all the tools can go on there while I'm doing my work so I keep the bench clear. <laughs> Going to see the frogs. Here I've got frogs. How noisy the frogs here are. 
weird noises. They sound like crickets. Kind of, but they're not crickets. Frogs. And we walk past them, they stop. And you go about a metre past, and all of a sudden they start again. They're noisy. Uh, axe throwing! That's what we're going to do. We're going to have an axe throwing day. Not with this axe, though, because it's not the right axe. I used to throw axes. Strange it might sound, but I have a bit of fun. I've done it for years. I haven't done it since I've been in France. Yeah, I've got more axes now than I have then. Right, okay, so there we go. We've got our gate there, and we're going to mix up a little bit of, um, uh, well, it's not mix up, we've already boiled, so I need to mix up. I need to put some in the pot. I'm just going to grab a spit some pot over here. <coughs> Coming back, I'm coming back. Don't go. Right, so I've got a bit of linseed oil I'm putting in here. Uh, I've got a bit of solvent in it as well, just to thin it out, because um, it's, it's going to be too thick otherwise I'll take, even though it is uh, boiled linseed oil, so I boiled it and put it back in there. Um, not when it's hot though, because it'll melt. Because <laughs> that'd be stupid. And I've got a ba uh, brush here somewhere. What have I done with the brush? I've got a brush, oh, I see it. It hasn't been linseed since it's been put in, to be honest. So, no. Right, so we made this when I was, uh, just after I had my surgery done. I can't tell surgery. But the story behind that, I was supposed to have it done in the UK before I came here. And um, we, got, we updated all twice, twice or three times. We went to the, we went to the hospital. We, had to keep updating our um, address. So any appointments were coming through, they weren't coming through because for some reason it wasn't updating. They don't do software very well in the UK, do they? And uh, so, oh, for God's sake, I think this is getting ridiculous. Anyway, then we decided, that after that, we, we made a decision to move to France. I had done here, literally within two months of, have my, of having my electro shock uh, treatment for my hands. It's not a treatment, it's actually it's how they find it whether or not you've got carpal tunnel syndrome. They see whether your nerves are working basically. It's a nerve test. And they literally put all these probes in your hands and stuff and connect to the computer and uh, see what your reactions are. And it measures the, um, the, the measures the reaction. You get this, like, this graph and stuff. And you can, from that you can tell whether or not you've got carpal tunnel syndrome or if it's something else. So carpal tunnel syndrome is literally the, the nerves are being crushed in the carpal tunnel. And what happens is at night times you get this oh, weird sensation. Usually night times because when your nerves all swell up and heal. They, then there's no room in, in the carpal tunnel, which is a piece of bone in the hand, for the actual nerves to expand into. And it creates, well, you get numb and tingly. You can't sleep. Very annoying. You have to dangle your hands outside, you know, out of the bed. And yeah, it's not fun. And that's years of abuse. So. You need to look after your hands. You really do. I normally wear actually gloves when I do a lot of work. I can't do them doing this sort of thing. But I wear um, like cycle, cycle gloves, sort of fingerless cycle gloves. So sort of padded palms. So, it's, 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 yeah, you, you, with this stuff, you could literally have a big valve and just dunk it in and pull it out, let it drain, and that'd be it. There's no finish as such. It's, you're not varnishing. Even though it varnishes, you know, it's got um, linseed oil in it. Proper varnish, I'm not talking about the water based stuff. But, you know, I lo obviously, some people already know, but I, I love things regarding the environment and stuff like that, and I like to do the eco thing if I can. Um, but if you treat something and it doesn't last, it's not exactly environmental, is it? The, the trade off can't, how, it mustn't be that you have to replace whatever you have treated with some kind of eco brand or eco, you know, and it doesn't work and it rots or something, well then what's the point? You're going to make it again, chop another tree down or something, I don't know, I'm going to say. There has to be, um, in my mind anyway, I might be wrong, but in my mind there has to be, a, the trade-off can't be to the detriment of the actual um, job itself, because if you have two, for, you need two instead of one, especially if you're buying stuff. Not making it yourself. You know, whatever you bought, it's also had transportation, hasn't it? 
been made in the factory somewhere, that's all had energy used. People have gone to work obviously to produce their stuff, or machines, or whatever, which also have to be produced. But if it doesn't actually do the job, and you know, you have all, all this extra energy is being spent, which then, you know, economically might be a good thing, but for the environment, it's a bad thing. That's my feeling anyway. I don't know what it was. This, you know, I, I, see, I like uh, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, I know, I know other things like I know that like stop oil campaign and stuff like that. We we need practical solutions that will work. Otherwise, you're not going to bring people on board. People aren't going to um, warm to the idea of doing the right thing. And that's one of the problems, obviously, with um, I feel with uh, Extinction Rebellion when when they annoy people to the extent that they don't actually provide a solution other than just saying you can't have or can't do you know, that people are going to people are going to pay attention to it they're not going to some people will obviously but not, a lot of people they won't actually um make make the change because they don't want to make sacrifices they don't people on the whole do not want to go without for whatever reason Make it all pretty i am it's going to stink in the house <laughs> So it's not, it's, 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 you're not trying to create this lovely finish, you know, hitting all the brush strokes out and stuff like that, because there is no brush strokes. No. It just soaks into the wood. You've got your career so Now I can remember, like when I used to buy timber, construction timbers for outside, what have you, would be like, uh, have a treatment called osmosis. And, um, yeah, tantalised timber, basically. And the chemical used to call, yeah, was um, was called osmosis, was the chemical. Well, the problem with that is that it contained a certain amount of arsenic, and it got banned while we were obviously in the EU. And um, and but the, problem, the thing is, it, it never lasted so long after that. You know, a piece of um, tannized tin, it did last you know, 20 odd years, you know, any real problems. I'm talking about softwoods, obviously. And um, but then you, you got the. You've got that issue, but then you've also got to weigh up the, the, the con in the sense that it, arsenic is a toxic. It's toxic. You know, any preservative is generally toxic anyway for the environment. So you've got to kind of weigh up the odds. What's the lesser two evils? I think it's quite difficult, really. We're doing a very difficult time. If we don't do it, you know, with the, um, especially with the seed temperatures increasing. I can't remember what they said now. Um, Oh, it's crazy, man. I can't remember what it is now. I've actually done a video on my, um, it's gone on, I don't know if it's gone on yet, but it's gone on my uh, Earth Trifle channel. And it's, um, I can't remember what I was talking about either then. It's literally about the sea, the sea, uh, the sea, the sea the sea's increasing in temperature, killing off aquatic life. We're not talking about small amounts either, we're talking about catastrophic amounts. I think we're heading to for a very, very bad place if we don't. If we don't. Wake up. It's bad enough. By 2045, I might be from the <laughs> That's what they're saying. You can joke about that sort of stuff, but crikey. That is deadly serious. In fact, it's not even deadly serious because there's no death involved. There's just no life in the first place. Yeah, some scientists over the last 20 odd years, they did some analysis of um, data from sperm counts and uh, they, they, they come to the conclusion by 2045 that I don't know about women but men will be infertile and it's pretty much because of the way we live the way what we eat the, the toxins we, we put ourselves in front of you know that's in front of we expose ourselves to yeah we, do, we really are in a, in a bit of a serious situation with that and a lot of people don't aren't they or oh, global warming they always the court clean, right? oh, I remember when it was hot in 19 something, so, so yeah, we had really cold temperatures in 1962 and all the water pipes froze. And you can't deny the fact that we're losing the uh, sea ice, not just the um, the caps, you know, the uh, icebergs <laughs> you know, in the Antarctic, what have you. We're talking about sea ice as well, and that is uh, disappearing fast. I don't know why I saw that. I reckon the sea, if, if all the ice melted, the sea levels would rise by 40 metres or something. I might have misread it, but that's what I thought. 40 metres? My giddy arm. That would be Norwich gone, my home city. 
we'll start river year and then to the Winston that'll just uh, engulf Norwich great your armour thank god that'll be gone <laughs> all the cliffs right through where Eccles and went and on sea and places like that that'll all be gone UK, like that, that, never mind Brexit. Not much of it left. Well, we'll be able to get up close and personal. We'll be like, be, you know, in other people's homes on top of hills. The thing is, it's not just about us, is it? About our children. Our children's children. And animal life. All creatures, great and small. Quite depressing, really. Isn't it? Let's talk about the wood. This is chestnut. <laughs> yeah, this was a. It originated from firewood that was destined for our wood burner. And I thought, oh, that's a good bit of wood, so we split it down with an axe into all these little staves, and uh, and then the braces, the ledges, sorry, the ledges, top rail and the bottom rail. Well, it's actually a ledge. So you, you just got to get sort of like um, organic with it, you? you just got to go with the flow. Get creative, basically. I can't remember if I turned it over. I don't know if I did. Let's flip that round. So I think I've done all of that side, I think. What I don't get on this side will get from the other direction. Did I get his face? I didn't put any in his eyes. Yeah, that's soak that soaking. Quite easy to miss. But the beauty about it is if you do miss them it's all and it's dry, it doesn't make a difference because you can just add some more. Like I say, it's not like varnish. Oh, I did, did turn over. I see there's some bits I've missed. Then we'll put that on the side. Like I say, we'll get on with the next job. Soak in, and that'll just that will be wet when I take it in, but it won't cause any damage, providing you don't, you know, touch it. I'll just say, "Cow, I'll be careful. That's wet." And then if she gets any on her, then it's her fault. See? Or I'll just leave it out here in the sun to dry out. So um, I'll just do that. So literally, as you see, we're not. I'm not worrying about. Finish because there is no finish for the stuff, it just soaks in. Whatever doesn't dry off ends up with um, the rag, it gets the rag. Well, in this case, probably just go over with the airline and blow off any excess. I'm happy with that, that's good. So, I'll put that to one side, then we'll get on with it. Then do the next job. I missed any bits of fault, I think I have. Oh, no. So, I just washed off all the older uh, <laughs> dog hair. What do you reckon to that? It's quite cool, really. You know? You've got to admit, that's pretty cool. That's a cool gate. I know we haven't made it, we just, uh, well, I did make it, but not originally. Yeah, not today. So, yeah. A bit of wood bodgery, that's what that was. And it's got my, my patented wooden latch. You know, does the job. And it's been there a while, and it's still doing the job. And it's, you know, it does, uh, does what's, what's it meant to do. Keep the dogs in and out. Oh, we're in. Oh, anyway, they dropped it. So I'll put that over here in the sun. There you go. Yeah, it's on there. Look, woody hands now I have. Where's a rag? I need a rag. Could do a coffee. Crikey. Anyway, before we do the next job, let's see what you've been saying. If anything at all. Ah. <sighs> Been a lovely day, been streaming for an hour and a half. That ain't taking too long. So hopefully we can get the next bit done, get that fixed, because I won't be able to use that uh, fuel horse. <laughs> north to the south. Oh, north and south. Uh, where are you going? Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's for... Oh, nerve conductivity tests. A horror they are. I think it's really weird. Um, our French friend Bill actually took me and uh, 
and I was, I was sitting there. But the first time when I had the first operation, so I had the test since then, but it wasn't a couple of times since it was there. So, yeah, you anyway. know. So I was sitting there in this little room with this guy, same boat as before. Um, well, I saw this time actually as well, that recently. And they put these little, literally little needles in you. You, you, you get, uh, uh. <laughs> he's pressed a button and he goes, uh, 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 uh. all these wires come out. It's, it's really quite barbaric. <laughs> and sometimes your legs go, uh, uh. <laughs> So yeah, that was, um, but these must, and it made a huge difference because although I still suffer my hands a bit, they're not as, I've lost some of the dexterity in my hands, but they're not quite so ta you know, as precise as they used to be. But I, I'm not getting that horrible tingling. If I was before. Oh, come back. Yeah. Did you always watch on the budging? Bodging! Got a bit of bodging, ain't you? We're going to do a bit more bodging in a minute. Uh, oh, let's say uh, I was listening to a weather forecast this morning, says Gingers. Hello, Gingers. Uh, and, the U and the US is going to get some abnormal stuff during the next week. There's going to be. Uh, a bad storm moving from east to west. Oh, crikey. So right across the country, basically. For support, I watched um, that video for my depression. I turned off the sound. <laughs> oh, cheers, Simon says. Oh, yeah, you, I think you commented, didn't you, buddy? Oh, uh, yeah, and on, on my Earth trifle. Oh, yeah. I was a bit of a mix for anything to do with earthy type stuff. Have you had that, Abby Bernard, the nerve conductivity test? It's, yeah, it was a bit bizarre. <laughs> Cheers for that, Crystal. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, I, I get your point. You come here to uh, what I was going to be talking about. Oh, Brexit type stuff. And uh, let's see he's making the fence. It's, it's actually a stair gate. Get the dogs out. With Bodger stay gate. And then there's that, yeah, but you thought Tom breaks it. I've got to be careful because a Labour MP doesn't sit on it. Boom, boom. Nerve conductivity tests are awful. Mad bunk. Uh, Mad bunk. Simon says, because he did look fetching on the bench. Just with. <laughs> did it draw you in? <laughs> I didn't know everyone say that bitch. Oh, God. I don't know why. I did it when I made this bench. It's three years ago now that I made, when I made this bench. Yeah, two years ago. I was doing lockdown. He's on grinder now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, cheers, Bernard. Was it Bernard? No, Crystal. <laughs> Crystal. Oh. The best channel for shed pottering. Yeah, got to have a bit of shed pottering. A very nice scribing tool. You're talking about my. Uh, what have we done with it? Oh no, I ain't lost it ever. Oh no. It's there somewhere. Got that's not it. That's right. I buried it. I don't know very clear if it was there or somewhere. I'll be there somewhere. Yeah, I made my um, marking nice. So yeah, it's good. It, um, it works really well. And it's free. You know, not be funny, but tools like that cost are expensive. You know, handmade good quality tools, and it is a good quality tool. Oh, there it is, it's hiding. That. So I'm gonna make some more of these different shapes now. I think that's it, make really good carving chisels as well. You have a hand cup for um, whittling. So it's got a bit of whittling, isn't it? I'll make some, oh, there's walking sticks. One day I might need one. You don't know, do you? So yeah, um, and it's, it's recycling hunter. You, you, you're like me. You get to a point where you get a saw blade with no teeth on it, so you don't, it's, it's, no, it's no longer economical to repair or, or get sharpened. So I make use of the steel. It's not be funny, I'll probably make, what, a dozen of these out of that saw blade. <laughs> For what it's in. You did it all in its shapes, didn't you? Uh, yes, a couple of times, hated it. What do you hate? What do you hate? Bernard. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, I was listening to the weather forecast. I'll tell you about the weather, um, Gingers, everyone's listening, obviously. Uh, me and Carol, we're sitting here, we're looking over the field over there, and to our surprise, because this cut of grass, there's lots of grass laying on the field, a little mini tempest. 
I wasn't quick enough to get the camera, so I missed it. But a little mini tempest was forming in the field just over there. And all the grass coming up in a big spiral, about 30, 40 feet high, you know what I mean? You know, what would that be, 30, 40 feet? That would be three, I don't know, four, about 16 metres up, 16, 20 metres high. And it's um maybe higher than that even. But anyway, that was booming high, and it was just spinning around with all the grass and that. But oh my goodness, aren't going to be a little tempest, and then it just dissipated. Whew. I've seen it twice now, and it's the second time I've seen it in that field. I'll take that field, that field over there. Yeah, over there. So, um, that was a bit disconcerting. A friend of ours, who, a Dutch friend, who happened to be a dairy farmer, uh, he'd um, had a tempest come through their land and ripped all the trees out. Literally, uh, correct, literally a clearing right down the middle of their um, forest. And uh, one that was an oak tree there, quite a big oak tree, it ripped it out of the ground and it was upside down with the root sticking up. On the on the crown. It was all sitting on its you know, on its hair. The tree was upside down, literally. Couldn't believe it. The power. They lost the roof as well. We call that a tornado. Yeah, it is a tornado. <laughs> and there were sharks and everything, that's a shark nado. It was, yeah, no, okay. A sheep that. Right, okay, we're going to now do our draw horse. And the draw horse basically is used, it's an old, it's an old piece of um, equipment, and be used with the. Uh, where is it? Where's it gone? Where'd it go? Put it somewhere. The draw knife. Where's my draw knife? I put it. That's strange. I've lost, I'm losing things. I definitely need more space here. More space. Anyway, draw knife is where you've got two handles and a blade. You literally pull it towards yourself. But you have, you need a way of holding your workpiece. Now, traditionally, it'd be used for things like, what would be used for painting chairs and stuff like that, but also spoon maker. <laughs> yes, there was a spoon maker. So the spoon maker would be basically make the spoons and they'd use gouge chisels with a little scallop. And the rest of it would be done with a draw knife using what we're about to repair. And it's my old one I made a few years ago because I did used to use it quite a bit uh, until, well, got a bit distracted, left it outside, and it is a bit of a mess. So we're gonna make, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna revive it and make it so it's a usable draw horse again. Like a saw horse, but for, it's like a vice. Yeah, vice horse, horse vice. Can't remember the bottom name for it. But anyway, let's do it. I could do a drink there. I'm off the alcohol at the moment. Oh, no. no alcohol for me. We live in a valley and we get mini tornadoes on summer afternoons because it's not so hot in land and the hot air wants to get to the cooler. Ah, oh, that's probably what it is, isn't it? Because it's blooming hot air today, it's lovely. You can see the heat actually radiating off the, off the field over there. And um, yeah, and the breeze is, is still disturbing the grass. Because the grass over there, you probably saw it when I was doing my tree plant, the trees and stuff, um, which we're still doing. It's gonna go, I think it's going to take us a couple of years to get that done. Uh, we've propagated loads. I mean, crikey. Um, hopefully we'll get another... How many, how many done? It was way over 100. 150 old trees, I think, I've propagated. Um, plus the ones we've ordered as well. Plus the ones we've already bought. Um, and... Yeah, so it's, we're going to be busy in the autumn, we're getting them in, in the ground. But anyway, the grass was very long, we'll be cutting the grass, so there's got all this long, dry grass everywhere. It's a mess. <laughs> you gave the top, oh, they, they probably need it. Yeah. I'm going to get her slip on to him as well. Say hello. Say hello. Say you look yeah. muggy. We've been watering tomatoes and we've watered ourselves. You watered yourself? Is yeah. that why you got a. What? No, no shoes today. <laughs> no. Oh dear. No. I think she Emily, needs you don't. You, you got. What's that funny face about? I think she needs wally boots for Nana. Emily, you got a funny face. I Is think it... she needs wally boots for Nana. Time. Do you think uh, the wind's changed? <laughs> she doesn't. How about? Okay. <laughs> she did not be impressed, does she? <laughs> My little granddaughter, Emily. Uh, we live, yeah, we live in the valley. All right, should we do that? And should we get that um, get that saw horse up here on on this bench? I might have to pull through bits and pieces off out of the way first, and then um, we'll see if we can make that into a usable saw horse yet again. 
Caroline! Oh, what a coffee. It's desperate for a coffee. Oh, what if I get her? I might just go and ask if she can just put a coffee back up. <laughs> oh, it's too high, I'm too short. My legs, oh, 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 terra firma. Right, let's just, uh, first of all, I think I need to have a little bit of a clear. One half is clear, well, I just shunted everything over. Now I need to um, make a bit more space. That, I think that might be a good idea. And I'll put this out of the way, because if you're like me, you forget it's there, and then it'll be, well, it'll be tipped out and it'll be wasted. So I'll put this back in the workshop. I'll grab it when I need it. The other thing to think about now is my battery. Let's just plug that in. If it doesn't affect the audio. So I'll just move it down here. Move the pack as far off away from the actual. Oh, no, let's do that. I do talk to myself a lot, you probably noticed. It's a mumble, 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 mumble. Caroline, you know how much I love you. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> Can I have my flask? That is, yeah. It's very hot today. Can I have my flask? Caroline, can I have my flask? My flask. My um, cup, special cup. Thank you. Oh, there's my draw knife. I found my draw knife. Right, so let's get some of that out of the way. Um, because it's just going to get in the way. So put that over there. Yeah, something's going to go put on the bench. Do, 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 Not on in there, that. I won't need that. I won't need that at the moment. I won't need that at the moment. I won't be that at the moment. Catch! I won't need that. Probably. To sharpen the steels, might need that. I've got a sharpen tape measure, a pencil. Put that in this holder. <laughs> right. Need these little blocks of wood. Those and a bit of space. Right, knife. Oh. Ah, get caught up in the voice. Okay. Uh -huh. da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Let's grab the draw knife. Not the draw knife, the um thingy jiggy. <laughs> Sauce. Sauce. Ah, I do. By distant, by distant saw. Right, so we've got a couple of bits of wood here. These two bits of wood here, we're gonna use those. They're important, so I'll put them put one there and one there. Let's grab this hose out the way. Let's move that over here as well. Chisel, we will need that probably. Maybe. Maybe, but a bit pointless because it's not that sort of thing. Anything that's going to be tipped over and make a mess, I'll get out of the way. So, let me grab this, uh, this old antiquated looking thing here. As you can see. It's in a bit of a bad way. Yeah, it's had its day. So I found that's going to be my new wedge because I can't find the wedge. So I'll put it one side for the moment. So I don't need that in a minute. And the idea is you sit on there, which you wouldn't want to do at the moment because you're likely to fall off. Um, you sit on there and you, you have this piece there, you have, you have a leg piece on the bottom here and you push forward and that locks 
yeah, holds down your piece of wood. It's a vice, basically. And it did work a treat. But now, as you can see, not so great. No. And the idea is you alter the size of your vice by pushing that wedge in and out. And basically fit, push that up and your piece of wood that you work on sits there. So if it be a spoon or a long piece of timber bark on you want to remove, you put that there. But we're going to dismantle that first, then recreate her, um, and lock these legs back in. We're going to keep these legs, so, well, they're a bit, they're actually solid, they're loose in the sockets, so we're going to have to redo the sockets, put wedges in there, so they're locked in. So that's off. This can, should be able to come off, but it can't at the moment, so I'm going to have to tap that through. Got a big hammer. Hopefully that will free up. Oh, well, that's tight. That's probably been corroding in there. That's not very good, is it? It's part of an old jack handle, I think. Oh, God. It should, should, I hope, it should come out. It's a piece of oak, this place is. So what's happened is it's corroded, it's hurting the bolt. I don't know if we're going to pull that out very well, are they? Might have to cut the head off so I can move the... Yeah, we could just do that, actually. could just cut that off. It doesn't have to be that. Well, I think that's what we're going to have to do on that one. Because that's no... If I draw that through there, what's going to happen? I'm going to split in this piece of wood. I don't want to do that. Let's put... Oh, okay. I'm bellowing the end over as well, which is going to make it even worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on, I don't know if you can see it, there's a head on the end of this bolt on this side. Um, it's not actually a bolt, I think it's an old um, jack handle. So there's been a rod that I found, I thought what that do. So we'll use that angle grinder again, we'll chop that off. I didn't want to do that, but we're going to have to. Ah. It's going to have to go! I need to replace this because this is it's not raw necessarily, but it's so dry and brittle, it's no good. So I'll just leave the rod in place. Oh, I do love you. Oh, you're so great. Oh, he left me. She left me to my own devices, she did. You left me for nearly three weeks last week. Whoa, it's nearer, it's nearer three weeks than it is t one week. <laughs> She's referring to when I went to Ginger Island with a ginger. Well, you the that was an experience. <laughs> I'm not talking about the island either. <laughs> that you just cut off. No, it gets hot. So now that can be removed. So I've got these two components here which are going to be replaced with my new ones. Um, the next thing I could do is do a remove. <laughs> we need to... Oh God, it's hot! <laughs> Second time I've done it. All right, um, we're going to... Remove the flappy bit. Yeah, remove the flap. 
that's just screwed on there. The hinge is actually still in good order. So hopefully you can move the screws. The screws are probably going to be rusted in the owls. So I'm going to remove the flap, but we'll reuse that. And probably reuse the hinge as well. I might give it a bit of a wire brush. But before I take it off, I'll wire brush it in situ. Because it'll be easier. Yeah. Makes sense. I think it's a good idea. Because we want to reuse that hinge. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it still works, doesn't it, you know? The flappy bit. <laughs> so let's remove the screws. Hmm, so she's, they, they were still biting. I'll replace them with something a bit more suitable. A traditional one wouldn't have hinges, you'd have a bit of rope or something like that. Or nothing at all. I'll move that piece of wood because it's not needed anymore anyway. And I can then, oh, then I can get a good old sand up. So I'll wax a bit of paint on this hinge. Let's clean up a bit, back, a bit of black paint. I know it's not ideal, yeah, it's not. That's still going to rust, but I'll slow it down a little bit. The other option is you could just switch this wire brush up and dunk it in a load of oil. But I'm going to wax a bit of paint on it instead. I'll grab some paint. Put it on there, like something to grab a hold of then and move it out of the way. So, um, I'm not worried about the finish, so I'll do both sides at the same time. So that side's going to go to the uh, workpiece anyway. I'll put this to one side. I'll give it another coat as well, I've just gone off a bit. Oh, we've got a black hinge. It's not, not a case of it being black, it's just a case of just protect it a little bit, a little bit longer. Because originally that had some plating of, it of, some, of some type. But the microphone's still on, that's a good sign. So that's, that bit there's done. I'm not removing the legs, we're just going to re-secure them. These bits we're just going to use as a pattern for the, um, the next bit. Yeah, for the replacement. What do you call them? Levers? Pedal? Leg pedal? Leg lever? I don't know what you call it. It's a lever anyway. We'll put that over here to one side. So we still need them, but not for the final job. And we'll remove that bit of wood here, which is where the old wedge used to go on. And we're doing something slightly different this time. Um, so that needs to go. Somehow. That seems quite secure. Is it screwed on as well now? So let's get on the anvil. Oh, it's been very. Oh, it's been glued on as well. So the glue's obviously held. That's a bit of old PPA. Blimey. It says held, there's only a little bit on there, the rest of it's given up with it. <laughs> Stronger than the wood itself, that's what they say, isn't it? So, I'm going to attack this in a minute uh, with an angle, well, angle grind with a sanding disc in. Just clean it all up, because this too will need to be oiled, because it lives outside. And we'll be doing some videos with this. You know, it will be, we can do, it's all sorts of stuff, whether it be old wooden spoons <laughs> for, for the kitchen or it could be wherever, you know. Might make a chair. I do love making things like that though. You know, it's good fun. I'm using an old draw knife for that one. So this is um, very old, very, very old. This is, we've had a long, long time. And that was an old one, this is French. Um, so, so I left the cruise, which is not far from here, and uh, went to the UK. Let's come back in. <laughs> That's it. So you've got the cruise. Careers, careers, careers. That's quite cool. 
No one there. Before I get carried away. We live in the valley. Do, 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 do. Right, okay. So we're going to clean that piece of timber up. Bum, 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 bum. With the, well, sander. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. I call it a sander. In this case, it's actually an angle grinder with a padding. Yeah. Some people have seen me use that before. Um, well, a nice coarse disc. Not because I want to rip it to pieces, but because the coarse disc, what happened is the, put, um, the tips of the actual uh, abrasive will wear flat. But the, the, actual, the bit about it is because it's running fast, because it's an angle grinder, um, because it's, it's coarse, in between each of the grits, it will clear the, the dust out of the way quicker. Especially when you've got dirty, because it's dirty, dirty timber like that. Uh, I'm not after it being like, all shiny, smooth, and you know. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Not after that at all. It's after it actually to do its job. So I'm going to get a quick clean up. Obviously, wear your safety specs if you're doing anything like this. Normally, I'd wear a mask as well, but I'm outside anyway, it's not too bad. I don't know what rats have been sitting on it, apart from me. Over to the other side. Oh, not too bad on that side actually. So I'm not going mad. Well, I might be, but I'm not that not that sort of mad. Maybe. This is a bit of old Douglas, that's oak. This is a bit of old Douglas fir. So we've got those two bits there cleaned up. I don't need this at the moment. We'll do that when we, you know, it'll be flapping about and getting in the way. Now what we need to do, we need to sort these legs out. Because at the moment they're floppy. We've got floppy legs. And floppy legs just won't do. Say they're floppy. No good whatsoever. Especially my fat body on them. That won't, no, it's not going to work. So what we're going to do is, we're not replacing them. I think they're okay as legs because there's no leverage going on them. If, if, they, if, they, if they bust under the strain of my weight, but then I'll have to rethink it and you know, put some more legs on. So we're going to glue them into place. We're going to use the difficult, these PVA, this D3, but it's not waterproof. Um, so what I'm going to probably use is my cascabite powdered resin wood glue. So I'll put it on one side because it is waterproof. And the other thing about it is, 
It's as it's. Oh, oh, I'll wait until I get back. I'm a coming. Oh, where it is. Need that. A pot. Pot, 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 pot. I am coming back. La, uh, la, 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 la. Okay. So that's my Padres wood glue. No, it's not Corinne de Farm. No, it's not bath salts. It's just a pot that I put it in. So it'll be silly. So I've got a mix, mix and stick and I need some water. I've got some water. I've got my powdered resin wood glue, I've got some water, that's what we used to mix it with, and I've got a, yeah, this is a, it's a Greek yoghurt pot. <laughs> we put a bit in there like that. Yeah, again, when doing this, you should be wearing a mask. Because it's, yeah, it's carcinogenic and stuff. Is My moat size, I'm not too worried at the minute. Right. Well, you say it's carcinogenic. It's, um... Oh, urea formaldehyde, basically. That's the active ingredient in it. So you mix it together like this, almost like a paste, like cottage cheese, it, it, like, sort of look, like cottage cheese to start with. And as it warms up, and it's a bit better at the moment, because it's a nice warm day. It won't take so long. When it's cold in the winter, it's an absolute nightmare to mix. It doesn't mix very well at all. You have to, you just have to leave for five, ten minutes to uh, start absorbing the moisture into the powder. So give it a sign. So that so now I've done that, I'm going to leave to one side. Anyway I do, I'll put it over here. We'll come back to that in a minute. So that'll be that will that, that, just change it's it's um oh it's so surface tension it's yeah it just it'll just change it. It'll be it'll be a little bit different, it'll be better. So what we need is some wedges. Now the wedges basically we're going to end up doing uh, is we're going to be splitting the ends of the legs effectively. And by splitting them, you're spreading them. And whenever you do this, I've seen it done wrong so many times, I thought, oh God, what are you doing? Use some common sense, unfortunately common sense is no longer common. Now, um, the thing about when you do this is that you have to make sure you put the wedges in the right direction. Uh, I'll explain what I mean. If you don't already know, we've got a piece of wood. All right, now, a wood grows upwards. <laughs> a wood grows up. A tree grows upwards vertically, and the grain goes in its length. Hence, the grain is going from there to there, all the way across this piece of timber. A bit wavy in places. You've got a few knots in it and stuff like that. So, the things you've got to bear in mind. You've got to be careful of. But whenever you put a wedge in, now, this has had a wedge in it already, but it's shrunk. So whenever you put a wedge in, you have to make sure you put the wedge in the right direction. And if you don't, you potentially will split your piece of timber. So if you put the wedge this way, for instance, yeah, in that direction, you're going to be spreading, spreading that piece of wood that way. And if your timber is fragile, you're putting unnecessary stress on the, all these little cracks in the wood. And potentially you could split the wood. And then it won't tighten anyway because effectively you've got a spring, a springy bit of wood. It won't work. And this side would be even worse because they're nearer the edge. So what you do is you put them in the opposite direction because you very rarely will you split the timber going in the length of the grain. So it can happen. You can basically here, for instance, if you overdid it here, with a wedge that way and you split it that way, that lump here can literally just snap out. It won't, not in this case. And also we don't need to be too tight because we're going to be using cascomite uh, powdered resin wood glue as well, which when it goes off is hard and actually brittle, it's a brittle glue. And the big bit of that is, for this job, is that any voids that have been created because the wood shrunk will be filled up with a very solid, a very hard, dense material. And it doesn't compress, and because it doesn't compress, the joint becomes tight. Whereas a PVA, even when it goes off, you probably know when you've got your PVA and you peeled your dried PVA, PVA off the top of your pot here, well, it's flexible. I've got a bit on this, no, I'm on there. Already put, already put, oh, a bit there. Yeah, it's it's bendy, it's flexible. That glue's flex. Is, you can't see it very well, but 
no, it just drops as well. But yeah, it's flexible anyway. So um, it's like a plastic, and because of that, it it well the joint can compress, so it makes the joint weak. So yeah, so casco bike pad is good. It's very good for that, and you can get it in the UK. I haven't seen it here though in France. I actually bought it from the UK when I, before Brexit. I managed to get 25 kilos over it. Um, but the, the, more, the, the latest stuff that they've been pop, uh, isn't as good as the old stuff regarding the cat's right? Not at all. Nowhere near as good. But there's a company called gluesdirect.co.uk in the UK um, that makes a, a cascomite, their own version of it. Um, and it's apparently very good. So I'd recommend getting that if you look at any. They do, they do sample packs as well, you thought give it a go. So, um, coffee. Caffeine. Oh, I love my caffeine. Do you used to use um, cascamite at hearts? Pa like a powdered wood glue? Yeah. 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 That's what I've got in here. That's what that is. Do you do uh, uh, Cascamite and Aerolite? The Aerolite's a two pack. Yeah. 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 The um, their latest Cascamite got bought by Polyvine, and their latest offering is, is really, isn't very good. It's really, no, it's terrible stuff. Um, it's not like it used to be. You're better off a PVA. I know. Oh, it was. It's brilliant. It's um, it's, it's, it's too brittle now. And it doesn't. It seems to adhere to wood so well. Fortunately, my stuff's old. It was an old, older batch. And even though it is older and it should really be out of date, it's still better than what. It's still better, yeah. So these legs. So I just pull them out one by one. What I pull them out? Yeah, there you go. That's fact what I got on the end of there is you know that goes into the socket and it's very dry and you know you can see the, the old worms attacked it but actually, i think that's old actually that's old that's underneath the bark so it's not that the yeah, worms been sitting on the wet driveway it's obviously rotten on the end there i'll just chop them off um but what we're going to do is we're going to effectively carry on that put another wedge in there and spread that outwards but now i took it off i might well just whack the uh where I can't get to it very well, like this end here, just run the sander over just you know, a bit cleaner. Because I'm going to put I'm going to put fresh oil on it, so I want it to be able to be able to, be able to be able to. Be able to. <laughs> I want it to be able to accept the oil properly without just soaking into dirt. Holding it in, it is. There's no glue in there. If it wasn't any glue, it'd been PVA probably. front leg come out. Oh, big the leg. Oh, that was a bit tighter. It's coming. It's coming. There's your blows. Blimey. There you go. They'll pull that nice and easy. Gotta got pull your wood out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite 
solid. Just that the outside layer is kind of like gone soft and rotten. But most of it, yeah, you know, the actual wood itself is solid. And normally I'll be using that to clean these up using that draw knife. But because obviously I haven't got that at the moment because in pieces I'm using that to do the cleaning up. <laughs> Put it on the floor, safer on the floor than actually leave it on the bench because I'll, I'll trip over the blooming K because I've done it before and then I'll go flying. So I don't want to do that. So that's the rear leg. Big rear leg. Do, 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 do. Actually, I'll just clean that up there a little bit before I put that in. That's not really impossible to do. I know it's the bottom. Don't really matter. I've been, maybe I'm a pedantic girl, I don't know. So now what we're going to do. Let's check our glue, see if it needs its final mixing. And then we'll glue these in, and then we'll um, put the wet, create, create, bake the wedges, and then dry the wedges in. And then that, as that glue goes off, it should be rock solid, and then we can then reconstruct the other components. These are really useful things, to be fair. Um, we've used it a lot. Now, when we had the TP, all the poles for the TP came, um, came out of the old, old acacia poles. And um, we've done them all on here. We clean all the bark off from all here. All the knobbly bits. As you can see, it's come together. Everyone needs one of these. It, you know, it'll be funny. It doubles up as a as something to sit on, a bench bench. You know, it looks cool the garden anyway. I did. I did, Bernard. Yeah. Um, you got some, have you? Uh, it's not what it used to be, uh, and I, I don't know if I contacted Polyvine in the UK about it because I had a batch from them at the time of the lockdown, and a small batch, like I had some of the old stuff still, and it was terrible. It was nothing like it. It was hard to mix. It didn't want to go together. It didn't want to mix properly. It was really, really white looking. It just looked like they've had a load of talcum powder or something. And on a contact, they said it's because we couldn't, because of lockdown, we couldn't get, uh, because of the pandemic, we couldn't, uh, they couldn't get the ingredients they needed. So I'm hoping that they're going to actually go back to the uh, original formula. But if not, because I don't trust them now, quite frankly, um, if not, I, if, if you're in the UK at all, I would go to, to uh, Glues Direct because I've had really good feedback from, uh, from people who've been using gluesdirect.co.uk. Um, and they've got their own mix. So now I've left that for a few minutes, and that's just can I do this back to front? What do they say? Put your water in first and add the powder. No. I've I tried that, and I had so many disasters. And also, it's really hard to judge how much glue that, that you need. Yeah, and really hard to mix. It's a bit like when you're adding. Uh, I know, corn flour to water if you've got thickening gravy up or something like that. And you put too much in all at once and then it's, you know, it would lumps and you can't get rid of them. So I did it the other way around and I just dribble it in to start with, a little bit of water to start with, and create that cottage cheese. And and then I'll carry on, yeah, what, what leave of it, then that carry on mixing and it ends up as it should. And the more you mix it, the more it seems to break down and end up more liquid. It's to a point where obviously it doesn't go any further. You definitely have to add more liquid to do so. But at that point, you're, you're fairly confident that it is fully, yeah, you know, it's, it's completely mixed, as you can see there. So that's fine. So I'll do it the wrong way around. I've done videos on this actually before on this channel. I think they're on this channel. I might make a new one actually. Actually, looking at a lot of my old videos, I think some of them need to be remade anyway because they're a little bit silly, bad sound. And uh, yeah. There you go, so that is the glues mixed. So it's a little bit more liquid now. So that's kind of how you would cast quite a bit like that. It could be a bit more, a little bit more runny if you like, wouldn't hurt. But it could be a bit thicker. The other nice thing about this stuff is, you now I, I know people tell you, oh, you mix your, pat, your, your sawdust with your, with your PVA glue and you make really good filler. Yeah. You remember me saying that the PVA is rubbery? Yeah. Have you tried to sand rubber? And do yeah, you know, create a good job. But this stuff, when it goes off, because it's so hard, it makes the best wood filler. It really does, and it's great for doing joint work. 
and if your joints are a little bit gappy, like I said a minute earlier, um, because it doesn't compress, you know, you've got a joint in uh, Morton tendon or something, you, but you pretty much fill those voids. You know, it, does, it, it does shrink down a little bit as it goes off, but pretty much it will fill those voids. So there you go, that's mixed. That's what we're going to use with some you know, uh, wedges. And that'll lock those legs off. But we've got to create our wedges first anyway. We're going to make them. I've got some little blocks of wood over here, uh, which offcuts bits of oak. That will offcut off the uh, uh, my chop saw. Is that right? Well, it could have been a different width. So what I might do is just, I'll be back in a second, because I'm just going to cut them so they're the right width. And then we'll make our wedges out here. So I'll grab a pencil so I can mark it to the right width. Otherwise they're not going to be all the way across, so I just need to cut them down a little bit. Take off that much, so I'll use that as my template. I'll do all them. I'll be back in a second. Don't go away! Don't, 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 don't! I did, let's defend for themselves, I did. Oh, I terrible. I do apologise. <laughs> so, bring you a bit closer when doing this. This is um, a bit hit and miss when you do this, because it's kind of, you know, hit and miss and also you hit your fingers. We'll chop them off. You don't want to do that? No. Not really help it. Because in this case, if they've got a knot there, it wouldn't really help either. So we'll create some wedges by slicing down there. Now, if I'm, in, if I'm doing stuff in the workshop, I'll just literally cut them out on the table saw. Bit by bit, it's quite dangerous, but you must make sure if you do that, you've got to use a cl uh, zero clearance insert on the table saw. And I'll do it off a longer piece and then nibble it down. So, some will work, some will not. Why are we doing this? So, might have success, but they might not. Oh, okay. There you go, there's one, that's a wedge. No, I'm repairing it. So, uh, replaced all the bits. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to use it on this channel. Come back, come back here, you. Don't you run away, Mr. Wedge. Right. I don't know if my uh, live show the other night was too silly. I just feel a bit silly well, I thought, well, I've been a bit silly on the all shorts. <laughs> I don't know if the wig was a good idea. <laughs> oh, well, I had fun. No one else did. Life is too short, isn't it? We get all hung up about stuff. Oh, that's actually so usable. See, so if these bits might end up e even using some of these scraps to fill some of the gaps if I can't, if the wedges aren't enough in places. Because it's not uniform, it's not like you just create new legs and you have um, thread them through. You actually have these old legs which Nick will have additional knobbly bits. Now we'll use, I'll we'll use that, off. I'll clean that one up in a minute. So we'll clean the, that one there, it's usable, that one's a good one. That's too thin. Yeah, that one might. It's that one there. We've got, we've got two there so far. That'd be a good store. Oh, I've got one up there, so three. So what we'll do is now, I'm going to put over there, and I'll come over here. And what we're going to do, we're going to pair it more into a wedge. Now, there's, there's a drop in this bench, for, you know, so you can do things like that. So I bet you, oh, that one's okay, that one's good. That one there, too thick at one end. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the chisel on the worst side of that bit of wood and we're going to literally peel that off 
Tears could have been doing just being sharpened. sharp and I do really good what do and there's that one do you like my mahogany mallet Made that years ago. Turn that one side there. Try not to cut your fingers. Enough. A bit more for the ink. Yeah, this bench I made out of logs. I literally cut the the legs. I didn't see it on there. The legs and that were actually cut from the trees and the shaman. So um, yeah, <laughs> it works. Did the job. So yeah, let's bring it back up here and just do one side at a time. Are we in there? Yes, okay, that's good. So what we're going to do is, we're keeping the old wedge in there. We've got to drive a new one around it, but before I do it, I'm going to pull it out again. Do one at a time. So we so can then put it, just prop that up. And then we'll um, put a bit of glue in there. It's a bit dirty. We'll work our glue around there a little bit, so it's sort of more sort of cleaning as you go. You could re-drill it. So you drill it a bit bigger if you want to, but I'm not that worried. Obviously, because I'm, I can't read it because I'm using the same legs. So that one there like so. That's all in. All in that way. A saucy old egg in that. But nice format. That's nice form. Mm -hmm. Now remember with this. Because I'm trying to fill voids, I don't want to try and force glue in afterwards. I want to make sure I overdo it now and just clean it off and then move it into the next leg. So I don't waste the glue, but just um, I, I want to make sure I've got no voids, in theory. Don't you fall over. Because like I said, I can always clean it off. But, you know, it's very hard to actually reapply the glue and force it into the nooks and crannies. Because the glue is the thing that's going to fill that void. So now I've done that, by the way. I'm going to put that leg back in. I'm going to do a twisting motion as I go. So I'll work that glue so it's really, it's really over the top at the moment. Doesn't matter at this stage. Okay, like so. Just make sure the legs are spread. I don't want my vertical. All right, so you see there's too much glue. Yeah, it's losing that on both sides. But don't worry. Well, I'll remove what I can off the top here, like so. And then, um, using the chisel, I'm going to create a bit of a split in, going in that direction so we don't split the top. So I'm going to literally put a split in there. With my mallet, do I hit it with a wooden chisel with a metal hammer? Do you? Because that's a silly thing to do. Do that. I've created a slot. 
Now, I can wiggle that a bit. Doesn't matter. So I'm widening. I'm creating that slot into like a V. I could fall, put it in a bit deep if I wanted to. But I'm not going to at this stage. And then I'm going to try and drive that in. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Because what can happen then at the end? Breaking your wedge. If, it's, if there's not enough room for it. So, I start the wedge going in. I want it in least, but at least halfway. You've got to keep an eye on, make sure these splits here don't move. What you can do is grab a clamp. Um, what that clamp will do will stop the grain from trying to split. So you do it basically across the, across the grain like so. And if, there is, if it is trying to, to give, it can't go anywhere because the clamp is going to stop it. So that's at least halfway now. And that's as far as I want to take it. If any further than that, I'm going to end up breaking it. <coughs> so that's good. So now we've got the next one. So what we need to do now is we need to take this leg out. Which it might not come out now. Because, oh no, it is. That's right. I thought it might not come out because I've got the uh, clamp on that. So we'll put, you put that there. Does that work? Did I say that? Nope. It's not vertical enough. That's annoying. I'll have to use leg them on me. I'll give them a minute ago. Like so. Right, so now what we need to do now, we need to clean, uh, glue that hole. I'll use the, yeah, we, we, we use some of the excess glue at the same time. I don't, I don't need to leave that glue on there. You know, not like that, because it looks stupid. Now, traditionally, you wouldn't have any glue. You know, they need to use glues in most carpentry. They wouldn't, these modern glues weren't available. They had to go to a huge amount of trouble with glues, like for instance, these fish glues, hide glues, you know. And it, 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 it's a process to it, and it takes a long time to do. You can go one day and make some. And, um, the problem, you know, rabbit glue, even. The problem is they aren't that great, you know, especially for outdoor work. Um, so, today we have the benefit of having these modern glues, which are very good. Now, I don't think any PVA is good outside. I don't always buy waterproof PVA because there's no point. I'll use a cask mod if it's going to go big outside. Otherwise, I'll be using ordinary PVA. And one, one in particular I quite often use, or used to. Because it, well, because it's good stuff. Well, tight bond's good stuff as well, to be fair. So that's... Uh, so over over egg that one a bit, which is good. That's what we want. And now we need to... Over egg the leg. Over egg the leg. Got over over egg the leg. Let's say we clean off any excess anyway. But we need to make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies because this glue is not just going to stick it in. It's the fact that it fills the voids and it seals the wood as well. So it's going to help prevent it from um, rotting. The old cask of mine. You probably can't see what I'm doing actually. Oh, you can't. You just see my hand moving. Can you see it? Not really, no. Like so, cast coin all over my fingers. There's way too much glue on there, but like I said, at this stage it doesn't matter. We will be cleaning it off later. It's best to make sure all the nooks and crannies, you know, are full of glue. In you get, get in the hole, get in the hole, you. Yeah, join in. Make sure you've got everything. Give it a girl wiggle, so yeah. It's actually doing its job. So, as you see, there's. Way too much glue again, bulging at the top like so. If you're doing like fine work, you wouldn't want this, do you? I mean, you've got to stain, potentially stain your workpiece. So it wouldn't be very good, would it? Let me move it at the bottom here now as well. And then we'll drive in the next wedge. Okay, so. Do exactly the same thing again, we use a chisel to create the slot for the wedge, and then we'll do the other end as well. And then Fekka should have a relatively stable bench portion, then we can make the, the working component. Get that out the board. Make sure you clean off your chisels at the end of the job, because this glue's got water in it. 
I don't want to corrode my chisels. <laughs> okay, that's it. Holding the slot, but holding the slot, a bit of glue in the slot. But lose my mind again. Oh, there you go, that's a split one. So we'll drive it in together, we'll drive it in first. In like I said, at least halfway into the, the depth of the seat. Make sure that glue. Is on that, so I can then drive it in beside it. Hmm, don't know why. Never mind. It don't matter. Well, I could try and put this lot out. I suppose. <laughs> don't like it. I get this. I'll get that out. Set into place. Yeah, that's right now. <laughs> that worked. Okay, we'll leave that on there. There, yeah, all in my fingers. So we've got to the other end. Pretty much the same thing again. And they'll be locked into place. Give it a bit of a wiggle, like a bit clean on the way out. And I should have used that this time. On it. Now if, you, if you have a situation like this, you see a little crack in there, it's only, it's only the shake and the wood has always shrunk. You always feel that. Just glue. It's in PVA, there's no point. It won't do anything. But this stuff, that will fill that space. And you can use this for filler. You add, like I said earlier, you can add your fine sawdust into that. And it makes really, really good filler. So you mix the sawdust in at a time of actually while it's, a, while it's still powdered before you put the water in. That's what I do anyway. Okay, so that's in there. Take that off of that so do exactly the same thing again. Okay. Same direction. Not that way, because like I said, you'll split your wood. You won't be able to see it. If I, if I push it again, can you see that glue ooze as I, as I wiggle it backwards and forwards? It's, it's spreading the wood and squeezing the glue. And where did I put the Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Make sure you've got some glue on that as well. Make sure you've got glue in that slot. On the bridge. Didn't last time, did they? Yeah, they didn't they? Put it on there. I'm using this big, big hammer for this because it's got a wide surface area to tap with. So I'm not hitting it hard, obviously, I'm just drive it in. Well, this one feels a bit tight than the other one. Few 
feel movement in that split. Don't put a cleat underneath that later to if it's a problem. Then you see it, I'll squeeze it up, that glue's it moving. Then you see that, that is moving, so that is an issue. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a cleat underneath it. On. So I'm gonna do, do this now. So it's definitely, it's definitely moving. But there's eventually the leg will get loose. So if I put a little piece of wood in there, like a glue and screw on underneath, it will stop that from spreading. So what have I got? This piece of oak I took off, which will do the trick. So I have I had a piece of wood there like that, and glue and screw that into place. So if I just uh, I'm just going to whack some holes in there. And what I'll do is I'll make it over, over length and screw it in over length, and then we can then um, cut the end, the excess off once it's gone off. I'll just put a line in that touch that, or I could just cut something off, to be honest. <laughs> in the workshop. I'll be back! Don't go anywhere! Da 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 And where has that drill gone? Oh, it's over here. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do it the other way around. I've got drills here. What am I on the back going in there for drill? Don't need to. Come on here. Alright, let's just sand that off a little bit first. It's not flat. So, once that glue goes off, that effectively be the clamp. All the way up, all the way up. It will be better. Ooh, where's that drill? It is a drill. Three screws in there. Oh. My hands are no good anymore. Grab that drill for the screws. Grab three screws out here. These are just an uh, inch half eight, four mil. A bit, bit glue on that as well. So, there it is. Clamp. Okay, so I'll, move, well, I'll put a clamp, I'll put a screw in, then move it along. The next screw and reclamp.
got him a third screw. That's silly. How can the screw just run? Oh, it's on the floor. That's how it come. Over we go. Dun, 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 dun. I'm doing this because it'll stop that engine splitting. That's the idea. I feel that as I was driving this in, it was doing that spreading, which is not what we want. Okay, so there, that's well, it's in place. So um, the legs are back on. They do need trimming to them for a little bit because they're a bit rotten on the bottoms. Don't know how worried I am about that, but um, I'll wear it into place, Bobby. <laughs> There. Da, 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 da. Right, there you go. <laughs> you love the language I use. <laughs> oh, boy, I missed the week. <laughs> Probably because I fell asleep uh, listening to Roger Bisbee on Skill Builder. <laughs> uh, additional knobby bits. Oh, we've got to have additional knobby bits. Is that old cottage cheese? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Did you say polyvine? Okay, yeah, that's no, not as good as it used to be. Definitely not. I've had, to, I've, had I've had it fail on me. Where it's actually the glue itself is just literally broke down the middle. It's still stuck to the wood, but the glue is like fractured. Which isn't very good. No. I don't have my coffee. I need some caffeine. Oh my god, I put all wood dust in it. <laughs> Thank god it's in this cup. That's bad. <laughs> so yeah, so th this is literally... Do you know, I can't remember the proper name of it now. I'm losing the blink plot. If it's a draw horse, isn't it? A draw horse? Or... or uh, oh, it's a vice. A vice. Horse, vice, vice, horse. Vice horse, or something like that anyway. Did I show my marking knife that I made? <laughs> so now we've got to reconstruct the actual voice portion of this, whatever it is. And these were the original ones, which are, they're, they're, they've got no strength in them anymore, and also got splits in them. Um, so they had that, you're not going to get the wet enough pressure behind them. So I have actually. Uh, split two new ones here. They're slightly chunkier actually, which is a good thing. It might be because they're not isn't quite so dry as the original ones. They're a little bit uh, a bit newer. So they're replacing these. So I'll use the old ones as um, yeah a template. So what I'll do is I'll take that off the bench at the moment so we can make those into you know into shape and also we've got to make the uh the bit you put your foot on and the bit that does the clamping so we'll take it off there and i'll put take that bench out of the way because it's a bit in the way at the moment we'll put it back up when we uh start doing that again Uh -huh. So luckily I've got the templates because I've got the old ones. Let's move that camera so you can see. Oh, so I see. There you go. So. We will need to drill it again. Put it there for the moment. So this, these two pieces here have been cut or split from the same log, like these were. Hence, they're, the they're actually the same shape, and um, so that way they marry up properly from left to right. So I'll put the glue over here for the moment, so I don't end up putting another muck in it or more muck in it. Doesn't matter too much, to be fair. So normally, I'd, I'd peel all this bark off before I start using the old draw knife, this thing here. Which I could do, 
I need a way of holding it. I could use the vice. That might work actually. Let's try it. Give it a go. It's not that we leave it on. Doesn't really matter either way. I'd rather be off. It makes it rough, you see. Chestnut again. It's a piece of chestnut. Not a very powerful voice, so hopefully it doesn't move. I think I need to dunk this in some water as well. Because um, the collar, the uh, the ferrules have gone loose, which isn't very helpful, which means the wood's dried out too much. So I'm going to use a steel, this is a diamond steel. I'll use a flat. Diamonds, a thousand grit. Flat diamond, I'll use that on the back. Because by using the steel, I've created a burr. So I've got to lose the burr. Now that white stuff that's under the bar, that's the um, sap wood, which has no strength in it whatsoever. That can all go. And also that's where you get all the insects. So if you're going to get um, any bugs, that's where they'll be living, generally, in the sap wood. The layer just underneath the bark, which you can actually see, or you would recognise anyway, and it's called the Cambian layer. And this is a piece of chestnut. That's why I don't like using that voice. Because it's flimsy. This bench actually, when I made it, the wood was a little bit on the green side. I made it firewood again. Oh, well, not as I, I took the wood out of the trees, so that's green. Green, green. I trimmed up the uh, chestnut trees. The, the wood was a bit was green, the bench is actually wobbly now. So um what I have to do I need to re-wedge re-peg the bench because it's, it's all shrunk. That's quite normal, that's not a problem. Easy sorted. So it's a fine time to do it, so. If I find any bugs I'll show you. Any woodworm. Now, woodworm's not worse, just so you, you know that. It's a beetle. The larvae, that's, that, that's a lot of the damage what lives in the wood. So it's ready to bugger off and cause more damage. Nice job to do, but what it what it is is that it does actually what it really does do is create a lot of mess. <laughs> so 
even though that piece of wood was quite a bit chunkier than the original, um, it won't be because obviously we're taking all this cambium layer and all the sapwood off. And the bark. Peeling off. As long as it's, you've got some, you know, it's sharp enough, the draw knife it is. If it won't be when you buy, you buy a new one, it will not be sharp. You'll have to do some dressing to it and hone it up, I guess. It, so it actually does its job. But if you can get an old one like this is, like so I didn't have this new, that's old one I had. It's quite a long one, it's quite good. Now, if you want to export timber, most countries don't allow you to export the timber bark on. Because it, you know, it, it basically trans transports the bugs. A friend of ours, um, I've mentioned her name before, Lisa, she, they used to make fence posts. And they you know, the special machines remove all the bark. So they used to export them back to the Netherlands. So they used to get more money for them. I've got trees in the Netherlands. The material that I'm using to do the job on this on this vice, the saw vice, saw vice. Can I call it? Anyway, this, this is actually the piece that's going to be used to clamp itself. It will be it will be the clamp. Yeah, I'm using the tool that I've used before. If that made any sense, probably not. So I mumbled. Wondering why I'm not going further along the way, it's because I've got a bloody great iron lawnmower down here, an old Ransom's um, gang mower that I need to restore. Started, but I ain't finished. I don't want to move because it's for Oh, it's paint. The bench is wobbly. But even if it won't wobbly when I built it, it's just shrunk. Now it needs to tighten up, or fix it to be tightened up. There you go. There, there you go. Okay, that's one. Get the sweat on. That's what it was like. Bark removed. Don't sit around doing nothing. Have <laughs> you done that yet? Don't know. These people. These people. What are they like? Oh, Caroline, that guy. You know, Bob Biddle. That bloke who's um. On the, on the on the video, he's from from Salos, where from where we're from. He's um. Oh, 
Maggie's died now, isn't she? Sorry? Maggie's passed away as well, no? Yes. Three years ago. Oh, they know all them. Yeah, Bob. When, when Bob was about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, exactly. He was a character. He might do. He used to um, hang about with Steve. Yeah. Is Steve, oh. Which was Stephen? Stephen the one who used to live on the bend? Stephen's the Stephen's the one. Oh, he's the one who used to live in. Oh, right. He's the one your mum and dad met, isn't he? Sorry? He's the one your mum and dad met. No. That's the one who lives on the bend. That's what I'm... Where you... Oh, okay. Um... I, know, I know you mean, I know you mean. Whose hedge I took out when I, when I crashed? So it is a small world. Yeah. I'm still alive, I'm not dead yet. Wendy, are you still on the road? Sorry? You know Wendy? Wendy, yeah. Yeah, well she died about three or four years ago. Um, what, Wendy with the wonky teeth? No, Wendy, who used to work in the shop sometimes, who had cattle and spade. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. She died, she had to Oh my god, really? She went that old. I'll be glad when it's done. Sharp. So shave with it, that's what you need. Don't do your never agents, no. God, this pen is so wobbly now. Might have to be another job. It's desperate. I'm not going to use it properly. So remove as much as I can before I actually. Probably can't see nothing, can you? I'm just sitting there. Before I flip over again. Before I, tick, uh, before I flip her over and tickle on the other side. Let me show you a bit closer up. You see that, that piece that was really white there? It was a deep bark. That's the sapwood. That's the heartwood. But it's darker. And obviously the bark. And just below the bark, where you say you peel a piece of bark off, for instance that, just underneath the bark, we call it a cambium layer. So we can see. There's no strength in that sapwood. So um, you don't really want any workpiece if you can help it. Sometimes it can add effect, but... More often than not, it's, doing, it's not adding any actual real strength. But you see, yeah, yeah. That's a piece of chestnut. It's probably semi seasoned down to probably about 14%, 15%. I could probably check it actually. I'll tell you, I'll go get moisture meat and I'll show you. This moisture meat here is probably the best one I've ever had, and it wasn't expensive. Another Chinese job, probably. Um, I found it to be the most accurate. I compared it with um, one day at Mazier's, there's a wood yard on the road here, and uh, that's a more professionally expensive jobby. And this one was pretty much spot on. And this is non invasive, so it's um. The beauty about it is, it, a lot of uh, moisture meters have prongs. They, you stick it in and it basically measures the resistance between the two prongs, the two little pointy bits. But this one, no. It's non-invasive. So you, just, you put that against your piece of wood and that'll tell you. You use it on the 
yeah, do other jobs as well. Last pair. Everything's getting dark, as in the exposure. So if we grab that piece of timber, the chestnut here, right? This won't be dry, dry, definitely not, because it's um, well, it's firewood, and generally firewood is down to about fifteen percent. So it'll be interesting to see what this is. Let's see how dry it is. So we have to ch change the mode. At the moment it's on wall. You put masonry, softwoods or hardwoods, and this is the hardwoods. So that's what we're going to put it on. And then we'll place it onto our. Whoa, that's quite wet. And I know why that is. Because it's been rained on. Because it was outside. 35%. So that's really high. So I find a piece of wood that isn't. Oh, I can say this piece of. I am hard, we're not here. This. Six. Six percent. So this piece of mahogany, my mallet, my mallet's mallet, is dry as a bone. Seven percent, really low. Yeah, this piece of older, which is basically what we expect to burn on our fire. And the reason why is, I think it's probably because it came off the wood part and we had a, a lot of rain, and that is thirty-five percent. So it's quite accurate. Every time it's going back to exactly the same figure. If we move it across. Is it going to change? No. It's less near the ends of the wood, but it's thinner, it's drier. No, it's just there, it's dry. Well, because it's a little further away there. So it's too wet. If I change it to like um, softwood, for instance, it's even wet. So that's quite, that's not very, it's not very dry at all. So that's going to shrink, um, yeah, even more. So that's quite, quite a good little meter. It, work, it does work really well. Off. But you can use it on masonry now as well. They're not expensive, they're about, oh, I think it's about 30 euros. It wasn't expensive. Whereas the one they were using down at Mazir's was like four or five hundred. So it was really expensive. And that was a prong type as well. And they would come up with the same meter readings. So that bit of wood is not dry, even though. It's been out there on the wood pile probably two years, you know, in a, in a um, mould in its thingy. And because it's been rained on, it's obviously got saturated. It don't feel wet, but it clearly obviously is, because I was it's saying it is. It doesn't lie, no. So let's peel the set bark off. So they need to be deep. They left the dog behind. My son's dog is a bit um, it's a bit needy. Not like being left. So this little, this little tiny thing over there. Yeah, it's whining at the gate. Hey, what's one get through? No, oh, they say, don't allow, you don't allow, there's nothing there anyway. Dogs, eh? What are they like? What are they like? Right, let's carry on, shall we? A bit more than that. You're noisy, you up here? Yeah, I know, I know. What we've got to try not to do when you do this is not to slice yourself in half. <laughs> I really didn't get your ears. <clears throat> I don't. That microphone's still on. Hang on, I'll check if that one's okay. Yeah, that one's on as well. I have the battery on the phone doing. The battery on the phone's good. Three hours, ten minutes. Blimey. What my normal project, I don't know if you've seen it, I'll show you if you like. 
It's in a bit of a state. It's ancient. Well, I had it semi apart once. What's happened is that it's the look, you see it there. There you go, an old ransoms. And I've seen some stored ones of these, and the, the, the cocky, they, they do a very good job. I've had them before. Uh, you know, I set three of them, that's only one. And it's um, a bit newer than that one, actually. That's, uh, that's, quite, that's quite old, that thing is. But I've got a tote behind the quad. <laughs> These are fuel. If I can get it going, probably that is. Wobbling your boat. Wobble, 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 wobble. Dog wants fish to note. So I ain't got much of a choice. They do dictate our do yeah, dogs, do, don't they? They tell us what we can. Sebastian? You're a bit noisy. A sawhorse. Yeah, it's, it's not really a sawhorse because it's, um, it's not for sawing. It's supposed to use an old draw knife. So is that more of a vice? Yeah, saw horse. I've got saw horses in, in the workshop hanging up. Um, when I do panel work, I think I use them quite a lot. But when I use them, um, what did you hear that? I heard a hawk. God, we do get some wildlife here, I'll tell you. All right. I'm hoping those um, great tits get caught on my camera today. I managed to get a couple of shots of them. But I'd like to. Yeah, the one's coming out of the, uh, what do you call that? The TIE Fighter. I can't believe I've been birding already. He just made the thing. He went up about two, three, about three weeks ago, I went up there. They thought, oh, that's ideal. They must have made that for me. Now, if anyone's got woodworm in their furniture or anything like that, and you've treated it, and you say, oh, the woodworm's still there, we're still getting dust. Well, what you have to remember about wood, um, treatments for woodworm is that it doesn't kill the, uh, the insect, the larvae, on contact. It kills the larvae because it's eaten the wood that's treated. And they're only going to... Um, eating the wood when it wants to leave its little home or create a new little home and that's when it'll die so usually when it, it exits the uh, the actual wood itself so you get people oh I'm still getting dust well pretty much what will happen is that bit that worm or that beetle or larvae in okay, case so it'll be a, the beetle as it leaves as it as it leaves it will die it's not necessarily going to die inside your piece of wood. Unless it's fresh, unless it's new wood we're entering, and then it will be obviously creating little uh, holes ready to lay its larvae, and then it will die in the wood. Otherwise, no. So, it's all about re um, reinfestation, really. Preventing reinfestation. So it has to has to ingest it basically, just the, the toxins. Oh, this is hard work. It's a hot all day as well. So I think we're making a tool really, I'm not like repairing a tool. A little bit there to remove, remove which is uh, not much. Thank God. 
loads better if I had the actual horse itself. Vice horse, horse vice, vice. And I'm standing in a whole load of shavings. Where's my pencil? Third shaving to the left. Right. Oh, look at that. It went off. And now we're back again. good so we have these two to pattern off so make sure they're the right way around that's the bottom so that's where we that goes down to where your feet will go and that's the other one and they're posed like that so basically I'll mimic it the only thing is though I don't want this to be quite as high up this time I want it a little bit shorter because before I found it was too when it came up, it was missing the board. So I'm making it a little bit shorter. I'm good for smaller, smaller stuff. This is the new one. So obviously we'll clean up as well a bit more. Uh, and uh, it's going to be that way around because that's going to be the top. And the heavier bit will go to the bottom of your feet going to go. Like so. I'm going to leave them longer because that will prevent... Uh, the splitting. I can't have the bottom in it much longer because it's got to uh, we'll trim those ends. Yeah, like that. But also, this is going to be a little bit shorter. So when it dries out, hopefully it doesn't split. You could band the top, so you could put firstly strap it so it doesn't split. I like that one. So it's, it's dried on its end. Right. So um, where's my coffee? Put it over here. Oh, it's tiring work. This, you know, tiring work. Oh, goody aren't, I'll drop them, spill oil over there, let's turn that around. So yeah, so they're going to be the two levers. And then I have to make the, the portions that are going to hold the bit of wood down. And I have got two bits of wood I've already cut to length somewhere around here. So I'll grab it in a minute. Right, so, where is my bits of wood that I already cut off the lens? Did I leave them in there? I might have left them in there. Oh, I have. Now, you could spin these up on a lathe and do it that way, but we're going to do it on with an axe, probably, because I've got to make these ends tapered like the old ones which you couldn't see because they fell off and rotten away um, so I think they become like dowels on the ends uh, but we'll do that on the block over there but first of all we need to drill the holes where we need them to be to do that I'm just going to use a spade bit I've sharpened one up I hope it's okay because it's in a bit of a bad way yeah so it might be enough we'll see um, and I'll grab a pencil to roughly mark where they're going to be so I'm having this a bit longer this time so there's less, you know, risk of splitting where you don't want it to. And on the bottom there, I can't go too much longer because it'll touch the floor. But we'll go back here anyway where it is. So that's about where that's going to be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to mark each side. We'll put it together, we'll sandwich it together, then carry on drilling to mark exactly where the holes are going to go. That's my plan. I love where plan comes together as well, oh, don't you? I want this to be a little bit shorter, not by a lot. I'm going to go come down by another half inch. Because what I found is it was actually missing the end of the tilty board. So 
I'll just put a line line line. That one's going to be smaller because it's going to have to have the rod, the metal rod's going to be fitted onto that one. And these two, top and bottom, are going to have my, well, I've got these fitted. And now they ain't going to fit. No, 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 you can try, but it'd be painful. Don't do it. No. Oh, God, I bet. Talk about things like that, saucy stuff like that. Where people put things in the wrong places. Like Coke bottles. I, our friend, I think I mentioned this before, our friend Amanda, when she was working as a nurse, she's not anymore, she says she can't stand it anymore, but she, anyway, she was a nurse. And um, she had the emergency come in. Somebody, you know those metal um, Coca-Cola bottles? Somebody came in with one of them stuck at their bottom. Mm-hmm. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Well, it's sharp enough, but the drill's flat. Let's try the other one. Oh, they're twins! Yeah. I'd have it surgically removed. Oh, that's flat and all. But shut. I'm going to swap it over. I'm off you. Put them away as well. A bit noisy. You be noisy. That's just under there. That's... Right, we're already poking through that side, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Now I'm going to drop Sebastian. You're noisy. We'll do the same on this one. That's not very uh, sharp. Not sharp. Um, that should be charged up. I can't feel that. Well, there's a big fit and drill bit for that drill. And now I'll start poking through on this side as well. Like that. So what I'll do is I'll put these two together. All that.
Oh, I do apologise. I've been messing. Oh, in that just went out briefly. It's been streamed for three, three hours, 40 minutes, and then, like an idiot, I forgot about my microphone. So, you know, sound, sound, sound. Are we back now? Are we back? Have we got sound? I do apologise. How long has that been? When was it? 17.10, you said that. So, what's time now? Oh, well, not too long. About five odd minutes. Got sound! Yay, we're back! Let's make some noise then, shall we? Hello, Charlotte! Hello there! It's been more than three hours. Sound's gone. Oh, God, microphone good. That was my battery gone. So, when was that? That was. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, take care, Steve. Um. Yeah, we're back. We're back. I do apologise. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what happens when you work alone, you see. I was halfway through dry. Oh, crikey. Well, what's happened is. That one, for some reason, the transmitter, it's, yeah, battery's gone out. They were fully charged, but that one's still on. That's the one I was looking at, and that one's gone out. So that's not very helpful. Sometimes, they, trying to be clever with things like radio mics isn't such a good idea, I suppose. But I'm always moving about, that's the problem, isn't it? I do apologise. But again, you can see my beautiful body. How about that? How was that? Was that good enough? No? Okay. No comment? No? Oh, it's like that, is it? Okay. Don't have to be mean, no. Right, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to turn them down to create a, well, take me, uh, well, take me in, like a socket on the end, 32mm. So we're going to bring that over here, move this over here, like so, and bring that over here, over there, like over here, over there, over there. Here's you, huge man. Take my stuff out of the way, it shouldn't be there. <coughs> Plug it in. Easy said and done, you've got stuff in the way. Give us a click. Do that same thing when it comes out. Now we're not going to use this chuck, so I need to remove that. This is not the chuck that we need. Well, this is annoying, because I'll have to... Oh, hang on, over there, it's here. That's what we need, that one. So we need to remove the chuck. Remove the chuck! So, lock it off. Yeah. Oh, I need the an Allen key. Oh dear. Nailed it there. Oops, no, there we go. Because my cup. <laughs> Where's my iron key? That one? Oh. Oh. Is it? And it seems like a faff to start with, but it is actually going to be the quickest way of doing this. And better. That's the wrong one. Okay. screw that locks it onto the thread. They've got a groove in the thread. You can't remove it. There you go, that's my chuck. So that's a Jacob's chuck, a heavy old thing that is. Good though. And then we're going to use this chuck here instead. Spooky thing. Right. Now, what we need to know is where the centre is. Now, I wouldn't know, something like this wouldn't normally worry too much. But I want to show you something. I made something. Well, I have actually made a video of this. I haven't edited it yet. But it's a circle finding gauge. See? So you've got a smiley face on it. That's what you need. You do one of them. And I, 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 over the top, I, I dovetailed the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. <coughs> Blame the dust. So how it works, you grab your circle mark and gauge. It's great for reading wood turning, you see. And you place it on there like so, and you draw a line. Twist it round, okay, to the, to the not perpendicular, 90, 90 degrees. Draw another line where they intersect like that has, that's the middle. And it's great when you're doing this sort of work. But because it's actually, what we're using is not actually um, particularly you know, straight. You can't really use it on that way well, so what we're going to do is just grab the um, chuck, stick it in the end, it looks about right to the middle, and we'll whack it in. Let's have a whack with it. See, that, that's technical, isn't it? Like that. Let me move it there, over there. I'm going to screw that back over there. That too has a grub screw on if you want. Knock it off. Come on, get Do, 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 do. There you go. That's one. Right, and then we use the grub the Allen key to lock it onto the groove. Move that. Like that. Like so. That's good when it's like because they don't tighten themselves up, you see. So it's easy to remove within reason. So let's make that back on there like that. Right, in there. Oh, move that up there. It's probably in the middle. They could be on. Well, I don't want to sit over, so that's a bit right there. Lock it off, loosen that, and I'll basically I'll tighten that into it, and I'll squeeze it onto this end, which it has. A bit, a bit wonky, but make sure it's not on a high speed, which a little bit of high side, just a little bit lower. It has to be on lower speed, otherwise, you're going to shake that all in a row. That'll be no good. That's your hand, where'd you come? Whoa! Yeah. Who on there has got a fetish when we're looking? No? You haven't? Why not? <laughs> right, so at the moment it looks a bit wonky. Because it is wonky. Right, put it there. Put that off there. Hopefully it doesn't throw it. Get out of the way, just in case. Oh! It's wobbly! Like me! Oh, grab my coffee, I just dropped on the floor. Whiskey, so it's fine. And we know the measurement was 1.85, so I didn't want to mark that. Now that's the measurement which um, is the width of the board. It's not the width necessarily of where we have from we're going to take it. So we're we'll roughly going to the middle here. There you go, 19, that's the original. 1.85. Ninety-two and a half. So that's the width of the board, not necessarily the width of the actual bit where it's, yeah, if you know me. We'll move the rest. Two rests get in the right place. We'll do one end, then the next. Look at that line there. 
I might check it. I might move that off centre slightly. Look at this. I look at my line through here, but on the end it looks like it's the centre, but because that branch is trying to come off the side there, it's not. Bring it over here. crazy on this because because it's off centre I don't necessarily want to um, take too much material off it. It's got to be 32 millimeter. Right, got another drill bit here. There's a 32 mil, so I'll just set this to that. Yeah, that's it. Need the vernier gauge. Basically, I need to make sure I need to get that down so that just slide over without too much effort.
go too crazy here, because if I go too crazy, what's going to happen is I'm going to make it too thin in places, because it's, like I said, it's not central. I might even move that a bit more. I'm going to end up moving too much material off the wrong side. Try that. Say hello, Sophia. Hello, Sophia. There you go. Hello. Yeah, people are looking at you. Oh, no. Oh, look. It's got bunny ears. Oh. What's your name? Sophia. No, it's not. It's Emily. No, it's Sophia. How old are you? Five. Are you sure? Yes. I thought you were three. No. Are you sure? Yes. You don't go to school. Do. No, you don't. Do. No, don't. Do. No, don't. Do. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Alright. Oh, let's say hello, Sophia. See? Hello. Let's say hello to you. <laughs> right, we're, we're, we're turning at the minute. Over here. So we're going to make that. We're going to try and make that round ish. Can you stand? It's round and not like lumpy. So it doesn't look like Na Nana's legs, so it looks more like, um, like a bit down, like a round thing, like that, sort of. Ah, cool. Yeah, but smaller. So we'll whisk some more of that off. I don't want any bit of measuring. 185. This is a cool measuring thin pad. Well, it is, it's called a vernier gauge. What are these bits? That's what you measure. But what are these bits for? Well, that's because it's the measure. That, that measures in between. So whatever I put in between there must be that measurement. Okay. Yeah, and that's 32 millimetres.
we do is we then grab the verniers and see whether it fits in. Oh, not yet! But I will do. We've got to fit in that space, you see. See, that one's nearly there. Close. We've got to take a little bit more off. When do I have to do this? Well, the voice, we'll tighten the voice up. <laughs> Too much away, I'm going to lose some of the strength. So, what you take off one side, you'll take off the other. So, a little bit more there. They're about the same now, regarding the. Is it long enough? Right then, got to do, they've got to do that one as well. 
Tata. Say like this. Tata.